Give us that countdown or are we live? We are live. <laughs> Orlando, what episode are we on? 146. Hello. 146. Come on. 146 episodes. And we got wow. Brandon Marshall in the building. You know, I am athlete. You, like everybody knows <laughs> this about me for sure. I'm a huge football fan. <laughs> Primarily Bills Mafia. You know what I mean? This guy played for some teams that I dislike. You know what I mean? But one of the one of the greatest wide receivers. I'm um you don't think that somebody of your caliber would be in the industry that you're in because right. it's just you're you're the you're one of the goats out there. Right. You really are. So welcome to the Danza Project. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I appreciate that, but um, this is bigger than a project, bro. Like I walked in and it's like I saw the investment. I'm seeing the investment. Like this is dope, man. Like it's inspiring me. Oh, Seriously, shit. I appreciate that. You know what I mean. So y'all should be proud. The podcast space is crowded. It's hard, um, but I really believe the people who's making the proper investment like this is the ones that's going to eventually win. You just got to like sustain all of, like this time that we're in now. You know, I think like in in the next two, three years, things will settle in. It's going to go down to the people who are consistent. Just like you just said, 146 episodes? Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Mm -hmm. yep. But you're absolutely right because that's something that we're – that's the phase that we're in right now yep. with a lot of this recent buzz and a lot of people catching these viral clips and stuff like that. We're in a phase where it's like the hard work is being put in and we're just kind of waiting to yield the, the results and, and see everything come back from it. So it's like we're waiting on that final – the yeah. reward to yeah. say, like, it's all been worth it. You know what I mean? I don't think that's like, it, though. I think it's, um, I was listening, uh, it was today. It was a Bruce Lee quote that I read. Um, it's about the, it's about the direction and not the destination. So what you just said, you basically waiting like, boom, when we break. No, it's this. It's like, shit, we, I came in here and put a nail in the, in this wall you know what I'm saying? I, I remember pulling out this carpet before they laid this wood. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, we it took us four months to go get our first person to come sit in this mm -hmm. chair. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is the this is it. This is it. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. We're already there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you already there. It's just like keep going and then eventually whatever's supposed to happen is gonna happen and then it's gonna be another thing and another thing and another thing. But no, this is dope. This is fly. Um Thank really you, ins man. inspiration. Thank you. Appreciate bro. that. Yeah, it takes yep. It's a lot of hard work. Uh, we've spoken about this a few times. A lot of people, when you're watching it through your phone or your tablet, whatever you're watching it through, I, I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to do a podcast soon. And they don't realize that it's also going to be hard work. You're, you're going to have to be yeah. uh, consistent. And you're going to have to invest in yourself, mm -hmm. primarily. Yeah. I, you know, you know yeah, I think you guys probably did your homework, so y'all know I'm, you know I'm a straight shooter. You know, I feel like don't. I want to give advice. It's like, y'all made such a dope investment in this space. I ain't going to put your business out there. I know how much money you put into this space. Uh, and I just feel like, bro, y'all got it. But then we got the headphones on right now. And, and, and the reason why I say that is, like, that's where everybody else is. You know, everybody else, like, where this podcast space started was two people sitting down. Boom, you got a microphone. You got headphones. We got an opportunity now because we got our own money. You know, and, and I know a little bit about your business from what you told me before we started. So we got our own money so we can make our own investment in these things. And we got our own distribution now. And that We don't really own the platforms, but we can go on YouTube. We can go on TikTok, Instagram. We can go on Twitch with our own content. We don't got to be ESP. We don't got to be FS1. And so for me, you know, it's like how do we make our content look like HBO Max and Showtime? Right. Y'all already got it, but then we got the <laughs> headphones on. Yeah. You feel me? That's what I'm saying. So it's like when I think about this space and then I see what you guys are doing, I'm like, man, it's dope. But, you know, it's just me being, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, but I appreciate that. And it's it's something that I've been discussing a lot. And my biggest fear is of the distortion it could cause because I do want some sound. So I was thinking about getting the wireless mics and the wireless headphones this way that yeah, it, it sounds good. And, a, and another big thing for him and I was always like, like you said earlier, the cues, yeah. you know, when we're talking, I don't want it to sound like, you know, we're, uh, we're clashing over oh, each other yeah. so we could hear each other very well and things of that nature. But you're right too. It's yeah. also a space that, you know, like yeah. we both, are the same. So when it comes to advice, 
we take that with like right. an understanding that we don't know everything yet. Right. Yeah. And it's good to learn game from somebody like you. you know, and, but the reason why I'm saying that is because, I, you know, there's enough for all of us and we all can win. And I think the winners are going to be in the ones that make the proper investment. You made the proper investment. Everybody need to be catching us. When they walk in here, bro, like this is a vibe. Like, the, you, you know, what's, what's your name? Orlando. You got Orlando, like Orlando, how from the, as soon as I walked in to the music that he had on to, you know, the, the drink was available. You know, it's like not everybody's doing at that level. And so there's like a few of us that's up here and you guys had an opportunity to be up here, too, just from the investment y'all made and the conversations y'all create. And, it, you know, from a production standpoint. You know that that's the, that's why I said that yeah. because y'all you know what I mean I, I look at it that way yeah, yeah. no it's, because they they're not expecting us to, to make this type of investment they're not expecting us our content you know what I want I want I want them to come to to, to y'all take y'all take y'all content and say let's put it on HBO let's right. put it on Netflix because it's that it's just it's all of that right that's right you know what else I just thought about too I think because he comes from a music background this was natural in the beginning uh, audio so it's like. I want to hear the highs, the lows, the pitch. I want to uh, hear the, the bass. I want to hear. I think that's where that probably started from, but you're right. Piece by piece, we've been elevating the cameras, the sound, the light. Right. As you can see, we got like a hot air balloon system in here. Like, that's right. <laughs> and I think yeah, I wish everybody could next. see it. Like the whole operation is something that people need to see, but I can get, I understand that. Yeah, so. it's, it's, it is fun. Uh, I love podcasting. Uh, you know what I mean? And, and that's something that I wanted to ask you. Um, what has brought you more, what's been more rewarding for you? Mm -hmm. Has it been the NFL career or this side over here with the broadcasting and the podcasting? Well, I, I mean, it's a plan. Uh, in 2014, I spent my entire offseason at Harvard built in my case study out, case study on transition. And the takeaway was I need to start whatever I wanted to do post-career now. Right. And so I got into uh, content and commerce. A lot of this was like nonprofit work, things I want to do in the mental health community. So like Magic Johnson was somebody that we studied. And I was like, why the hell is this dude? I'm pushing a half a billion and he on ESPN. Hmm. It was a platform to push that traffic there. So that's the only reason why I got into, you know, sitting in front of the camera. I don't really like this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> right. Like I like business. So it's a whole process to it um, for me. You know, it's a plan, it's a, it's a strategic plan, excuse me. Um, business is more fulfilling. Not I am athlete. Like, I stumbled across stumbled across I am athlete. And we're in a pandemic, and, uh, you know, I'm living in a 17,000-square-foot crib in Southwest Ranches. Um, I got four-wheelers. Yeah. I got a chef. Nice I got a area. nanny there living in the <laughs> yeah. crib in a pandemic. Yeah. Okay? Wow. Um, I got toilet paper. <laughs> I got everything. That's a, that's a big, that was a big thing. Big, yeah. But here's the big thing, and you can relate to this because I know you got a, a whole uh, staff. You got, you got a whole team that you take care of, and for every one, there's two to three of them, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting there, and I had everybody, like, just following me and, and trusting, like, what I was building from a House of Athletes standpoint, a wellness standpoint. And um, then the pandemic hit. And I was like, all right, who am I going to be in this moment? Which wasn't, wasn't hard for me. Like, it, yeah. I am who I am. And so I, I didn't feel comfortable for lowering everybody or cutting everybody. You know what I mean? Firing everybody. So I said, let me find a way to keep my team on. We're talking about people are making $12 an hour, $13 an hour. You know, um, all my coaches were in the wellness industry. So that was definitely shut down. Brick and mortar shut down. Right. And so I was like, you know what? If I can find a way to sell a show then I'll be able to, you know, keep, keep my team on. Right. And so we broke through. It turned into a social, uh, cultural phenomenon. So that's how I Am Athlete started, you know, was just the idea of selling a podcast, a show, and then morphing, in, and then we morphed into a platform. And so I really don't enjoy, you know, because uh, it, it is hard work. I enjoy, like, when I sit down with people and we have dope conversations, but I don't enjoy the process of it because it's taken mm -hmm. away from, you know, me being able to sit down and 
talk about mental health, fly over to D.C. and sit down, you know, with the mental health task force and talk about the things that we need to do to reallocate the five hundred million dollar budget that they put in some bullshit, but should be going over here to the, you know, underserved community. So, like, that's just me keeping it real. Yeah. It's interesting you said it was part of a plan, Mm -hmm. something that not a lot of people have. And the thing about the plan is plan changes. The plan is never just set in stone. You know, what you initially set out to do isn't always going to be how you end up That's right. doing it, but it's also a vehicle. You know, as time goes on, you can kind of navigate and readjust and then figure out where you want to end up. It's cool to see everything that it's grown into being something that was just a vehicle to start with. That's right. You know, what it's actually become is pretty big. Pretty That's right. Dope. That's right. So House of Athlete is, is, is in a great position. You know, we're doing some amazing things there. It's hard as hell because I didn't get into it to – have one or two locations or just one product. Um, we wanted to get into different things. So I truly believe it could be a, a, a global brand, lifestyle, oh, beautiful wellness facilities. brand. Every, oh, like, thank you. Everything is. Y'all need to come by. Come on. <laughs> and then on the I Am Athlete side, it's just opportunity. But what, what I realized, I spent the last two years uh, learning how they work together. And it really is just top of funnel, right? Like, you know, we it's a great opportunity for us to, generate revenue and do some amazing things and potentially exit in five to 10 years. Um, you know, but that's just top of, that's just top of, that's just, that's just, that's just top of funnel where, you know, there's so many eyeballs on our content every single day, every single week. And so what are we doing with that where impact? Are we putting those eyes, where are we putting it? Where are we putting it? And so that's how I was able to um, embrace this and keep going. Cause I didn't, like up in like almost six months, seven months ago, I was still contemplating just walking away. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, this shit ain't fulfilling. I ain't just fucking sitting here talking about football and sports. I ain't getting in here to do this. Like for real, I, I played. That was fun. It was good. But like, cause you asked that question, how we got there is like, what's more fulfilling? Oh my goodness! Like football defined me for a long mm-hmm. time. That's why I struggled uh, a lot, a lot of times because I was like, that was all I had in my mind. I had to learn who I was, and that's where mental health came. And played a part. And so, like, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for it, but I'm fulfilled because I feel like I'm walking in my purpose. Huh. Um, so, yeah, now it, everything I do, it has to it has to move towards that. It has to. And I found a way, finally, where I am athlete and House of Athlete can coexist, and I can feel good about it. Beautiful. Just yeah. alone, watching what's going on with you in that platform, right? Like, it's a beautiful thing with, for mental mm-hmm. health. You know, it's good. Men don't really have the same access to the tools that women do when it comes to mental health, right? Being able to see a bunch of men sitting down, have a great conversation alone is powerful. And that's why I asked that question, right? Because mm. you're, you're, you were always huge on mental health. Mm-hmm. And knowing that and you having that room to be able to speak with other men that, are, that have been in similar situations, that are in similar situa- situations that you've already gone through. And you're able to speak them through some things. You're able to help them through their life. Because even even now, you just walking in the door. You're giving us, you're putting us, putting us <laughs> on the game, teaching mm-hmm. us things. That's right. Which is very helpful. And, right. I, and, and I know that that alone is rewarding mm-hmm. to be able oh, to talk yeah. to people and, and help them. Well, I mean, for the real ones it is, there's a lot of gatekeepers. You know, but like, y'all going to do things three to four years from now and sign deals three to four years from now that I never even thought about or looked at. And I would want, you know, when I come back over here and we might not do a show, but I might be breaking bread at the table with you. And you might be walking me through like what that looked like, Mm -hmm. you know, like we're first generation and everything that we're doing for the most part, like we're all minorities. And so like, I need to be able to tell you when you up like, yo, this is how I structure my serious XM deal. This is what you need to be looking at. You know, Cam and Mace, they got their show, It Is What It Is, and we sat down several times. I, sh- I gave them my whole, you know, like, they already got wow. it. Like, I'm learning a lot from them, but it's like we're sharing the information. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then when, they're, when they, they just did a big deal with Underdog, and I was like, well, this is where I was at, and here's what was on the table before I went left. You know, so, like, I know he was able to take some of that information. And maximize. To when he sat down with Underdog, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's why it's important for us to share information. But, you know, so many people, um, you know, they gatekeep. Yeah. And that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I don't like it. Well, you I know, mean, it's me, like. I, I get it. I understand it. Some people believe that. There's, there's too many people that believe they can't share information because they'll be taken out. Like, 
or this person to look better than them. They don't want to help somebody else. I'm, I'm all for it. That's right. You know, uh, just podcasting alone. Like we've reached out to several people that do podcasts and it's been met with an immediate, no, nah, we don't do that. It's like, we don't want to podcast with another podcast. Okay. You know, like, they don't it's just cross promote. Yeah. Promotion but, smart, but, but it's like, it's like a, a rapper saying, nah, I don't, I'm not doing that feature. I don't no, I don't want to put you on. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, sometimes it's, right, we'll see you at the top. Sometimes people, <laughs> sometimes people are hesitant to share the stuff that they fought tooth and nail to earn right. and get. It's like, cause sometimes, sometimes the game is to be sold, you know, mm. like I fought 10 years and lost a ton of money for me to get it to this here, for me to just hand yeah. out everything that I struggled and sacrificed for. Mm-hmm. It's, kind of, it's, it's a bitter feeling just naturally if you really fought tooth and nail, like I said. So it's tough. It's I, tough to give that information. Well, I agree with that, but it's like, what does that look like? You know what I mean? Um, you know, you can put together courses and you can teach 100%, you know, but like, so <laughs> if you had the <laughs> opportunity to bless somebody, there you go. Yeah. You had the opportunity to bless somebody, just bless them. It's going to come back. Like the way I, so for podcasting, for example, it's like, it took me seven months. Like Rick Ross is my neighbor. And when I was playing for the Dolphins, we got the jersey sent right here. We, I just signed mm-hmm. the jersey. That Fire. was dope. But um, shit, that was the first year I, I tried uh, weed. Like yeah. when I got to the <laughs> Dolphins, I wasn't even smoking. Welcome no, I wasn't Dolphins. even smoking. You know, we had Ricky Williams up here. So shout out to Ricky. Uh, he oh, really? Out to Heisman. Heisman. You know what I'm oh, oh, man, we can talk about so much. <laughs> but, like, man, I would drive over to uh, Ross's crib and just be me and him, his mom in the kitchen doing something or walking around the crib, and I would smoke with him a little bit, and we just talk about everything. This before he blew. And he was like, I'm thinking he, it was, like, in the peak of his career. Right. I'm thinking he liked that. And right. he's like, yo, bro, I ain't, I'm, I'm just now getting to the money. Wow. And he started telling me about the rap game. And so – uh, anyways, like I, I say that because like that's like, man, I go back with Ross. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's early before and so, Bel yep. Before, and he lived right around here. He lived in the same area. Yep, yep. So it took me seven months though to get Ross on the show, and I never forget. I felt some type of way, and then I realized it was like, yo, humble yourself, swallow your pride, put your ego to the side, and just keep asking. Because he got so much going on. You don't know what's going on in his life. True. And so eventually, he came on. Boom. And then Dion. Boom. Uh, then Cam Newton. So, boom. okay. Then Lil Wayne. Boom. Yeah. And then Kyrie Irving. And it was just like this snowball effect. All the run. Yeah. And it's so, so it, it was a beautiful thing, but it's like, you know, I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's like, what, what were you talking about? The journey? Part of the journey and, and just sticking First, to it. Giving First. people game. Giving game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> giving people That's the game. That's the zoom. Yeah. That's the sound right there. There you go. It, uh, have, being able to share with that moment with Ross and having that dope conversation and then having it come back full circle and letting it be on the right time, too, is also a big deal. And also, I think part of what you were touching on is how you reached out to him and know it wasn't the right time. It's like, don't worry. I'm going to stay on my path and keep pushing, and we'll find you on the back end. Because that's something that I can relate to, too, with a lot of guests. Sometimes we invite them. Maybe they haven't heard about us or seen right. us yet. Maybe it's not worth their time in their, from their perspective, which is fine. It would be foolish of us to not humble ourselves and get upset rather than being, you know, I, it's better to be calm and say, don't worry, we'll catch up. That's right. We'll meet in the future. If not yeah. now, that's fine. But keep in mind, we, we shouted you out. The time step yeah. is here. Don't forget. I like y'all approach. And we'll, this is another thing that we can talk about. We ain't going to talk about it now. But I like y'all approach. I think y'all doing it the right way. Um, y'all doing it the right way. And, um, yeah, you guys just got to keep going. Like, no one's invest. There's a few people that's invested, independently invested in themselves yeah. this way. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's what it's about. Because, like, if you guys are who y'all say y'all are, y'all can sit down, y'all do the research, y'all are, you know, doing the work, understanding what questions y'all need to ask, what we need to hit, and then y'all can get, you know what I'm saying, you know, a couple of names here and there, you're going to break through. So it only takes one. So, yeah. It only really takes one viral moment in this space for y'all to go. And we, then y'all got everybody's like attention. One, we had uh, Brittany Renner and Charleston White. Oh, that was, yeah, that yeah. was crazy. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You got everybody's attention. Yeah. But oh, hold, let me ask you that. So what did y'all do after that? 
Uh, well, well, I mean, we, we stayed on our run. Well, before that, we had Charleston, and that went crazy. And then we brought Charleston back to sit with Brittany Renner. Because oh. the Charleston, the first time he came <laughs> on, he, he, he said it himself. This was the first – this was the best interview he ever did. And he's a wild boy. But uh, for did him he to come say down that, here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's on good terms with us. Yeah, that's the man. Yeah, yeah, he's wow. the man. I'm that's actually – I never he, showed this. <laughs> and Charleston I'm not, I'm not showing man. this on. I never thought I would say that. Let me be honest. Charleston knows this, but Charleston is the man. I'm not um, showing this on air, but this time. is like Charleston yeah. said she wasn't drunk. This is after the show. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's seen that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, yo, he was. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, nobody <laughs> nobody knows what 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 went on here, and it was a it was a very interesting <laughs> wild show. You know what I mean? Yes, it was a wild show. That's it, y'all got it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Boosie went crazy when Boosie, Boosie. came up here. He was talking yep. about, uh, you know, he's he's very deep about you know the he didn't perform, he didn't take two hundred fifty thousand to perform at an LBGTQ community event mm-hmm. because it's not what he stands for. No beef against him, but he just didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. And he got roasted. Mm-hmm. But to you answer know? your question, after those moments, what do you do to keep the ball rolling? How do you stay consistent? How do you keep right. it going? What I'm realizing is with one guest, you do well with them, it, it buys you another guest. And I don't mean financially like cash. I'm talking once you see Fat Joe has been up here, you're going to say I'm as good as Fat Joe or he's better. I deserve yeah. to be up there too. I would des- right. I would love a spot. That's right. You know? And we also went on a wild run with battle rappers. Oh wow, really? Which yeah. is fantastic, especially they have a big internet community, so that blew us out of the water too. Right. Yeah, because you watch all your battles on YouTube more than likely, you know what I mean? So when right. we did that, we had Smack up here. Smack and, really? Yeah. Smack. Yeah. And yeah. we didn't even know he's rarely interviewed, right? We just saw the interviews that he did had. Uh did have. We we met him out in the club. Oh, wow. And yeah. he was like, oh, I'll do it. We had Jim Jones drop out the same day. I called Smack. I was like, you. Jim dropped out? Yeah. He, he came called. back. Oh, he, he came, came back. Okay, okay, it cool. was his birthday week, I think, yeah. so, or something like that. Oh, yeah, his birthday week is the one he came Cop oh, okay. came to. But the, <laughs> the um, man, I just called Smack, and I was like, you think you could come up? He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, when do you need me there? He's like, I live right around the block, man. I'll stop over whenever. I was like, I need you here in, like, three hours. Right. And he was like, say less. I'll be there. He pulled up. We had no idea what was about to happen. Man, the whole world. Adrian Broner, the whole world. Yeah, that's dope. And that's what I've realized, too, is like in those moments, right, you get Kyrie Irving, you get Lil Wayne, or you have that viral moment, that's when you hit up the publicist. That's when you hit up the athlete or artist. Yo, boom, we'd love to have you on because everybody watching. Why do you think you're here? <laughs> <laughs> but well, I know we've been, work, we've been working on this for like a, a couple of months, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Working on this a couple but, but of months. But that's what I was saying. Like, I feel like we're doing the right work. I feel like we're yeah. picking the right guests and the questions and the, the, the quality, the elevated conversations and all that. We're just waiting for it to turn over now. Like, that's right. It's there. Well, we I, know listen, it's there. We, you, you, look, I, obviously, I can see it. You know what I mean? Like, this is outside of like what I'm doing on I Am Athlete. This is probably the first, uh, you know, like I would say, uh, brand that I've gone into where I was like, okay, they understand attention to details. You know, that's really important because all of that matters. You guys built a brand. Appreciate that. Right. And so, like, y'all got that part. The hardest part for me where, you know, I feel like January, February is when I really uh, – start understanding the game. Remember, because I ain't getting into it to be in – I ain't get into it to be in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was trying to be in and out. Um, and so, you know, January, February is when I realized, like, the game that I was in, that I was in and that's, like, how do you monetize? Like, yeah. integrated marketing, you know, ad sent, you know, and even how do you pitch? How do you pitch? Yeah, what do those conversations look brands? like? Brands, how do you get mm-hmm. to them, the decision makers? And then once you're in the room, like, you know, what are we doing? And then also, like, once you get the deal – you know, how are you keeping a deal? Because mm. there's a lot of, like, metrics and KPIs that they need to see. Got to deliver. Yeah, it's not even just deliver. It's also just, like, if you want to run a sophisticated business, right, there's certain things that we got to track and we also got to report back. So there's so many parts to it. And that's been the hardest thing for me and I am athlete because people are like, damn, what is he doing? Why is this? Why is that? And it's like, bro, like, the hard work is, like, 
the shit that y'all don't even see on camera. Yeah. You know, I got to learn, like, I'm sitting down with Procter & Gamble. I'm sitting down with PepsiCo. I'm sitting down with the NFL. I'm sitting down with Diageo. And, like, I got to put together a media kit. And then I also got to, like, learn, like, the, you know, the, the cycle of it. Like, when are... Oh, man. Sometimes we we, we <laughs> let the first, when we start we trying to pitch in November December they're done. True. Summertime, summertime, July, August, they're they're done. There ain't no more business to be had. <laughs> so you got to understand the flow of this business. Mm -hmm. And so like that's the hardest part is understanding that. I feel like I'm finally in a place where I get it and I understand it. And so like when we talk about get, breaking through, it's like all right, how do we monetize this? Because we'd rather watch y'all than, than go watch them, you know, ABC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. That's true. Luckily, I think long-form conversation is here to stay. Unfortunately, it is oversaturated, even though we could be part of that new wave. But um, I don't know, man. I think there's something that people really get out of having long-form conversation. It doesn't feel – we're not talking in, and tonight on Dateline here. We It's not like – we're yeah, doing yeah. something. It's just you notice you're, how that like you're voice in the room. is always the one that comes out. That's how they, but, you know, there's, there's, there's a news voice. Yeah, it's like, yeah. but they're doing something. They're Ladies not and gentlemen, we you. have Brandon Marshall in the building. Today. <laughs> 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 but, uh, what I what I like to people to understand about what we do is I tell them just picture yourself. You know, we're we're at the one hotel. You're 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 with your boys. I know your boy. I'm with my boys, you know what I'm saying, me and Chris, Orlando, and we link up, and we're, we're, we're kicking it, we're having some drinks, and then it's we start talking. Right. I, don't, I don't want to... Conversation. Yeah. I, I want to have a dope-ass conversation talking about dope shit that's actually going on in the world that, not like, well, you know, we've seen this and this happen, what do you mm -hmm. think about that? More or less, like, you know, what are you going through? Mm-hmm. You know, what's life it. like for you? This way I could learn game from you. Mm -hmm. I always tell people the Danza Project is not a podcast. It's a network. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that so. is a network. Like, we get the opportunity. Oh, uh, you know, somebody else comes through the show. You ever hit me up? Like, oh, shit, I'm trying to get that interview, too. Mm -hmm. Boom, here. Hey, hit this person up. Or you know game about certain shit. You might know a better uh, publicist, the agent, uh, whatever the hell it is. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I could just, hey, you mind if... Uh, you, you can help me out look for somebody like this because I need somebody in this or that's I need right. somebody in this space. That's what, that's you know what who's like that? You know who's like that? Nori's like that. Yeah. Nori Yeager. Shout out to Nori. Appreciate Nori so much. Uh, Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. You know, all the smoke. Joe Button's like that. He blessed me all the time, but he he yeah. like what you say. <laughs> he more like what you say. He's <laughs> like, he like. I fought hard for this. Right. So he ain't giving it <laughs> to everybody. Of, yeah. And then even with me, sometimes I'll hit up Joe and he'd be like, nigga, I didn't give you everything. I can't give <laughs> oh, you no true, more. Yeah. <laughs> that was you my favorite rapper me. for a while. <laughs> really? Yeah. So I know. So you don't agree with Drake? Uh, I agree with both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, 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 I hear what Drake is saying, but I hear what Button is saying. Right. You know what I mean? For me personally, I wanted classic Drake that is this Drake. Because classic Drake is, I'm still fly, I'm sky high, and right, I dare. Right. And then this Drake album, you get a lot of that like take care type vibe back in the day when he when he first came out vibe. I love it, but Joe Joe wants, you know, where's that Jay Z album? Where's that Joe Budden is yeah. a, a lyricist, so he's like, you know, I need to hear what you went through with this. When Bootleg Kev was here just the other day, he said, you know, the one thing that I understand about Drake is this was the life that he lived. Like, some of the stories we want, maybe he just doesn't have that. Mm. Okay. Some, you know what I mean? Like, you got, you got a guy that came up in media. He was on Degrassi early on. So when you want to hear, like, you know, I lost my homie at this age, and, you know, and my mom did this to me, and my pops did this mm. to me, maybe he doesn't, maybe he already let that out. Yeah. Or maybe he's just saving it for something else. But his life, the life he led, yeah. is different than the life we led. So right. we're looking for something that maybe is just not in his arsenal. Mm. You know I like I mean? that. I, I, I can agree. I mean, we was on this. I mean, I ain't, I'm not. I'm not. If I say that, I sound like a hater, <laughs> but it's okay. Nah, but it's he, true. From, like, you know, yeah. It's like Drake. Drake is a great marketer, a great brand guy. You know, and I think if you're an artist today in art, you know, we think about that. It's like it could be in music, it could be in podcasting. You have to, you have to understand brand. You have to understand trends, and he understands his audience. So, you know, I think he. Uh, 
plays into that well. Yeah. Yeah. I love his blueprint. Oh, yeah. I love his blueprint. Yeah. It's definitely working. That's mm-hmm. undeniable. Mm-hmm. Well, what I was saying was uh, about Joe's comment is I took it as it was from a fan's perspective. It wasn't from a hateful perspective. It wasn't just coming down on him. It was like disappointment. Like, man, I just, I know you could do it. And that's what I want to see. I want to see the Jake Drake that raps with Jay-Z. Yeah. The Drake on, on the Ross features. I want to hear you talk about extravagant things and talk about how good this lifestyle is. Not mm-hmm. so much of the, 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 the sorrows of it. You right, know? right. And, and just elevate it. Because when he, what he did was compare him to Cole who is very mature in his lyrics, and you can see a progression from what he rapped about back then to what he raps about now. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think I think it was from a fan's perspective. I don't think it was really hate, but I do think it was a little premature. It was a little early. It was really? like the next day he said that, and he didn't right even really... The, yeah, <laughs> he, like let it, let it sit you, in. You have to with Drake albums. We've learned that over... Historically, you kind of got to let it... It's gonna, it might find it's you later. Hate mm. call he's trying Joe different Button. stuff, so it's yeah. not the if same a, thing every time. Hating, call him Joe Button. Come on, man. <laughs> well, you know, listen, he's got that listen. persona about himself too. Joe, but maybe maybe it was perfect for Joe because Joe got so much attention off of that. Yes, Hello. he did. The traffic <laughs> to his podcast went crazy. Yeah, true. You know what I mean? Yeah, Joe, you know, you know, Joe Joe's over like, yeah, keep talking because yeah, 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 Drake yeah. really don't talk. He don't. <laughs> he petty. He messy. He's a troll, but for he, you can tell it hit him. This one, this yeah. one hit him. He wasn't up there pushing T's uh, pictures, making comments. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so what? That, what That's that the thing? first thing I said is that it definitely bothered him, and for Joe, because I, I'm a fan of Joe. Right. I know his style. I listen to enough of his music. He's somebody that put his personal life in music. Yeah. For him, he's like, got him. Because he right. dissed him three That's times. Right. <laughs> Joe Budden dropped three diss records to Drake. Funny, man. Really? He hit him with the back-to-back. There's history there. Tahiri, Drake took her. <laughs> oh, so that's why. So Drake was just like, yo, okay, enough, enough. Like, I'm sick of this, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me check you real quick. Yeah. I felt bad. Like, I'm like, Drake, I'm like, Joe, you need to chill because Drake coming at the, after the whole industry he said something about podcasting. He said, mm-hmm. what did he say? I'm like, damn, I'm podcasting. Like, you can't <laughs> like, you chill. Like, we good over here. What 50 says? Say? He said, I, I wake up and read the news. Why fuck me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why? why y'all saying fuck me? Yeah. Drake said something crazy like, take that cheap ass, y'all, check that che- cheap ass mic and something, something. Now you podcasting oh, some man, shit. Stop I'm it. like, podcasting is good. It's yeah. good for us. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> but you know, he, he, he ain't talking about us. He ain't talking about us. He, he talked, well, no, but it was like the, the whole industry. I'm like, no, nah, don't do that. Yeah, don't that, do that's, that, that's when you know it hits somebody, though. Right. Especially yeah. somebody like Drake, because Drake is somebody that's super calculated in everything he does, but he went boom. Mm. And it, it struck a nerve. And, and you know, that, that shit happens in the industry. And, and for us, when people come at us, like, I'm, I'm telling you, I say this, when Britney Renner and Charleston were here, we got called all sorts of, oh, you guys are simps, you guys aren't alpha males, mm-hmm. if you were alpha. And I'm like, you you are clearly not in this space. Like, mm-hmm. soon as it was going down, I looked at him like, uh-huh. <laughs> we up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, let it don't, it yeah, let it go. I don't care. Let it ruin the camera. And like, let it, just let it happen. It'll yeah, be fine. Right. We'll buy yeah, another one. Yeah, yeah. And it just went down. And I'm like. You know what I mean? Like, the, the, the main call was my girl. Are you fucking kidding yeah. me? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, just let it what's, be. What's cool, though, after after all the folks who were saying all that negative stuff, there was other people like, hold on, hold on. What did y'all think was going to happen? Charles White and Brittany Renner in a room. This is exactly what you came to see. This is what's supposed to happen. It, mm-hmm. it could have been worse. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was like a best case scenario for everybody involved. Because <laughs> now she's on a run. She's she's promoting stuff left and right. Charles yeah, ain't going to stop. Unk. She was with, she was with Uncle Shannon. They said Charleston was looking different she ways. She was with Uncle Shannon. Yeah, she did the Shannon Sharp one. Oh, after. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's that's when, when he asked her about uh, how many bodies she had. <laughs> he's and she told him and he started. He said he's white. <laughs> Uncle Shannon's white. <laughs> <laughs> that's former alumni. And uh, he if he was former alumni, he wouldn't be talking about athletes the way he's talking about athletes. He, okay. He talking like, like he like he was trained to to be a ABC, NBC analysts. Yeah, yeah. It's like there's a responsibility that you have. Like, first off, I would say this amazing career. And he, to me, I think he's uh, probably, 
Um, he's probably top three when it comes to personalities right now in television. Yep. He he, he found this. He hit a stride. Definitely. When he started pulling out the black and miles and the Hennessy. Memes and stuff. On FS1, he found it, right? And he became America's uncle. So shout out to him there. But what I don't vibe with is when you tear down your fellow, you know, athlete. There's a way to critique them. You know, it's like, and you clout chasing, you talking about Russell Wilson a year later on some other things. Like, like, come on, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, your, you, your platform's too big for you to, Go chase that, yeah. and I just don't vibe with that. I like. I was watching the interview you did with Stephen A. Smith, mm-hmm. and I like what he said about that because obviously he catches all the flack for what he says and, he's, and how he's he a, says. He's it. a word Smith. He he's go go go. Yeah, but he, he well, his point was, I say what I say, but I really talk like this. If you catch me acting different, he's like, this is how I talk. He said, That's can true. I have a job? He said, this is my personality. If you catch me. Putting this on, then you could be annoyed with me because I'm doing something. I'm not being somebody. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. So Stephen A. Smith and, like, the Skip Bayless of the world changed the game from a uh, broadcasting, covering sports standpoint. Journalism, there's a – you're not going out there to critique, like, talking about the person, the athlete, the person of the athlete. You're not going out there talking about the X's and O's because you don't know the fucking X's and O's. Okay, so they went out there, boom, it turns into first kick, first take, and they start putting all this co- color in the game, Yeah. right? And so they, you know, it's like they start talking about things that, and it's not, I'm not just, this is not about Stephen A, it's about the industry. So they start adding, a, you know, more sauce to sports. Well, too much color. And so people's opinions, like you ask, like I was, I got into it on some, with somebody on my show, and they're like, this quarterback suck. I'm like, why does quarterback suck? Because he threw this interception. I said, why did he throw the interception? And they couldn't tell me why he threw the interception. But any, you know, body who who know like football and that person's job would say, like, actually that wasn't on the quarterback, it was on the receiver. The receiver actually ran the wrong route. So the quarterback dropped back. He took a five step drop. He looked the safety off, then threw it to the right. If he ran the right route, it would have been a touchdown instead of an interception. Mm. But what we see in media <laughs> is that you suck the quarterback through the interception, but re- the reality is it's on a wide receiver. Mm. So you got guys out there creating these narratives that's just destroying careers or mm. reputation. I see. And so, like, the reason why Shannon Sharp caught a straight from me is because sometimes he's going out there just like Bashing. Get, just click. Mm. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? It's yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's not you know, good. here's what I learned in that game, and that's why I had to get out of FS1 in, like, the whole linear stand side of things is because, and watch this, Stephen A. Smith, he loves, the he loves, he hates the Cowboys, he loves the Steelers. He loves the Knicks, he hates this person, right, from a, from a, from a TV standpoint. And then you got Skip Bayless. You know who he like, you know who he don't like. Yep, them Cowboys. Who loves Jordan, who loves LeBron, the bait. Right. So, basically, they, 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 they protect their takes, so it don't matter what happens in this game or what happens with this athlete. It's going to be something. That no, I'm, I got to make sure my point is valid. So you go out there and you start making up shit. Yeah. Like, because you got to keep it. Skip game. Bayless, how can you say something bad about LeBron James? <laughs> he got to protect his take because what? That makes him relevant. That that actually was one. That's one of his biggest things is LeBron James this, LeBron James that. Bruh. How can you go out there and talk that (laughs) reckless about LeBron James? Now, you can say he had a bad game. You can say, you know what I'm saying, that was a bad mistake. He shouldn't have did this, made the decision that way. You can can give your opinion there. But to say he's not good, to say he's not great, to say he's a terrible person, how? It makes him what? A hater. (laughs) <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> so that's that's why that TV stuff don't don't work for me. You know what's wild is now I'm feeling like, okay, now it makes sense why they call it first take. They're mm. stuck to their first take. Mm. You know what I mean? They don't want to change their opinion on it. And look, I, I mean, clearly when you were talking about bad quarterbacks, you were talking about Tua. Um, 
But <laughs> see, dude, you, now you, you sound like Skip Bayless. You, 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 you sound it. like Skip. He's trying to treat you. That's what he's trying to treat you. You sound like Skip. Look, I'm a I'm a Buffalo Bills guy, so obviously I'm always just rapping Buffalo Bills, and I hate out Miami just because I don't got just a choice. Well, you know at least I mean? you like, say that. I'm know. from Buffalo. I've been there. I lived in Buffalo Sorry 32 years. Oh man. <laughs> Yo, I always say, yo, that's the worst place to travel. It's tough. Bruh. The fans are good, though. Well, we, we, You know, I played for the Jets, you know, and I played in Buffalo probably like, I played 13 years, I probably played in Buffalo three to three or four times. Where the hell is the Buffalo Wings? <laughs> that's the Buffalo Wings. Y'all not known for Buffalo Wings. <laughs> they have no good it. Buffalo Wings. Uh, you, you just haven't, I, I, I got to take you out to the city. Yeah, okay. You, go with the local. you know what I mean? <laughs> so when you fly in to certain places, you know, you, you know, what we... <laughs> As athletes, you know, you, the only thing you can do is, like, go get a nice meal. Yeah, I want the Philly cheese and Philly. There was Philly. nothing there that. in Buffalo, bro. There's not one great restaurant. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> can, I, can I take you out to Buffalo I, one time? Now, I love you guys as fans. Yeah. The fan base, there's nothing like that. I'm just talking about from, like, a... Traveling. Oh my you know what goodness. I can't lie. So there, there are great Thank restaurants you. there. Thank you. Right? <laughs> they're, 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 you had to work it out, though. You're right. you it, because there's a, there's a reason why I moved out, right? There are great restaurants there, hundred percent. There are. You just have to. It's. It's. You know, I, I moved out here, and there's an abundance of great restaurants. You know, we're in, well. Miami's starting to get good. It was trash. Yeah, before. but you got Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood. There's a. I, I love Latin food, right? So there's there's Peruvian, Plenty. Colombian, Brazilian, Venezuelan, <laughs> the Puerto right. Rican, Dominican. There's any type <laughs> right. of Spanish right. food you want out here, and it's um. It's a beautiful thing to have that type of variety. And Buffalo is the type of city where you got to, like, find those low-key spots because it's not big, it's not flashy. You know what I mean? It's low-key spots that you would go to. And they have they have great food. You just got to find the great food. Mm -hmm. But I also know that it was a city that I felt like I grew out of. Love the people at home, but there's not that much to offer. Like, when, I, when I've when i gone back there, him and I went back there, uh, oh, you, you yeah. Conway the Machine, uh, Benny the Butcher, West Side Gun, those are people I know, so, like, you know, when they do a show, I usually show up. I try to be there. Right. Um, and we, we went back there, and I'm to, you want to Uber eat something? And it hits a certain time? Good luck. You ain't got nothing. It's, I, mean, I mean, it's there's nothing. I, you know, you want to take a ride to go find some food, you, you can hit those prime time spots, but well, if it's booked, you're done. Why are you wasting our time right now telling these stories? We know that. <laughs> like we know that. Like, why is he? He's like trying to say like we know that. Well, I'm not gonna let you bash <laughs> Buffalo. You know what I mean? Buffalo, but there's some crib. beautiful parts of Buffalo. Yeah. There's some amazing people in Buffalo. I'm just saying, like it's just <laughs> a lot of food. That's how. Food that's why you. But the, you know, you should be grateful for Buffalo. That's why you are who you are. Yeah, like, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, it was shit. just perfect for. It's perfect for you know. Yeah, Buffalo made me a dickhead. <laughs> right. Tough, we'll say tough. Yeah, yeah. Tough, top, 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 top notch. Major you, you New York, you know how to talk that shit. Um, but yeah, I can't let you just get away with bashing Buffalo. You just haven't just seen the food. It. But just Willis McGahey uh -huh. was there, and when Willis, you you you, heard, you know the story? No, McGahey left, and he went on his. I don't know if it's before he left to force himself out or after, but he was like, "Ain't shit in Buffalo, but Dave and Buster's. I'm not staying here." <laughs> Mm. And and Buffalo, being the fans they are, the Bills Mafia took every, out all the jerseys and burned them. Oh, you know no. what I mean? He was like, he was like, Damn, Mike that's Vick. the play. That's yeah. the play. How to get out of a city? You just say something crazy about the city, and they don't want me. Hey, James Hart need to go say something crazy about Philly. Yeah, he definitely get out of there. <laughs> I can't Philly. believe James Hart just he, he wants to be where he wants to be. He's, you got little baby. <laughs> 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 That's the take. That's where, that's where he where wants you to go. Where you going with that? He wants to stay. He wants to chill with his homeboy. That's it. I ain't going nowhere with it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. But it, it, I, I love sports. You know what I mean? I'm like, applause. I, 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 I fuck with Philly. Right. Like, I'm I'm hoping that they go on their run. Like, watching Joel Embiid uh, over not. there killing it. And, and you're right. Here you go. Wasting our time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he talking about but I'm saying I wish, I wish James, Harden stayed yes, and, and they yes. would go somewhere. That's what I'm saying. Right. If, like you want to see it yeah. for Embiid. That's right. He's a phenomenal right. center. Like, people, I think he's underrated still somehow, you know? I agree with yeah. that. I agree with and that. I want to see it for Yeah. For, for a few years, I was talking about how Joel Embiid is – like, he's the most dominant player in the league. Now, Joker had a phenomenal yeah. year last year, but I'm like, yo, this dude, Embiid, shows up at Shaq, Olajuwon, and KD. 
at times. <laughs> like, he's like that. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens with James Harden. You know, look, I'm riding for him from a player's perspective from, like, you know, listen, y'all do what's best for y'all. And so when we do what's best for us, y'all get mad. But I, if I'm a general manager, I'll be honest, I wouldn't be trading for James Harden. You yeah, know what I'm saying? True. But but as a player, like, look, y'all got y'all got the right to trade us, cut us when it when it when when it's suited for you guys, but when we say it ain't suited for us, now we the bad guys. So, has, has your view changed on it since being outside of sports? Like do you look at it like okay, yeah. I get it from a different perspective? Yeah, I'm less institutionalized. Mm. You know, I never was institutionalized. So some people look at my career and they be like, damn, Brandon, why this, why that? And it's like, man, I walk in and it don't matter if you're the owner. It don't matter. It's like, you know, we're coworkers. Uh, give me the respect of a man, not a player or some kid. You're not going to talk to me that way. And um, And then I always, like, stood on what I believe was right. Now, where I had to learn and my agent had to fly out to Denver early in my career – Pulled me to the side, literally just flew out there from Houston, Kennard McGuire. And he's like, meet me in the parking lot. I'm sitting in the parking lot in the oh. car, rental car. Serious. And he's like, you ain't got your fuck you money yet. Learn to be more diplomatic. All right, go back in, bye. Straight like mm. that. Just like that. And so, like, I had to learn how to be more diplomatic. And I would say I'm still learning. Uh, how to be diplomatic, and it's really hard for me. And the best way to describe, like, me, bro, like, and I'm not saying I'm on their level from a career standpoint yet, but, like, you know, when I think about music and uh, the the moguls and music, like, in hip-hop, it's, like, there's a lot of them, but, like, the three right now, and my who I grew up watching, 50, Diddy, mm. and Jay-Z. Mm. Yeah. I operate a little bit like Diddy and 50. I'm trying to get to Jay Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the, not you get it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Okay. Actually. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So right. like, I'm a business. That man. was some strong advice. You know in, I mean? in a few words, in a simple setting, just like I'm that. sure that advice or you know whatever you want to call it went far and did what it needed to do. It's I, different. We'll see. We'll see. It's like you know what what Hove say when I when I and when I show up in the room, I show up as myself. And when you do that, you lose out on certain situ like deals. Not everybody gonna rock with you. Kind of an enigma, yeah. you know. So like, I just it's hard for me to show up and like bite the tongue a little. I bit. can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. You know what I mean? I just can't do it. I mean, it also protects you in a way too, because it's like if you're not rocking with me for who I am, then okay, no problem. We can part ways because I need to be who I need to be for me. So. It right. would be better that if you're not rocking with me, then that's perfectly fine. We'll, right. we'll figure it out. Like, it's not like you don't have opportunity on the table or options that's on right. the table. So if it's not for you, that's perfectly fine. We'll figure something else out. Or maybe right. it will be at a later time. Right. That's, that's part of business. You know, like, maybe it's just not for right now. Mm. I'm not going to close this avenue completely. See, but, but I didn't think like that. You know what I mean? Like, how you're, 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 that's rational. <laughs> and, like, you're, you're going through a process, like, you know, I'm just like, what I feel right now. What did you just say to me? You just, Josh McDaniels, you just said that I'm not a, you just said I can't start on this team. You're a first-year head coach. I've been doing this going on four years, 100 yards, 100 catches, 100 catches, 100 catches, pro, 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 pro. You're telling me I'm not good enough to start, but I'm top five wide receiver and 31 other teams would have me as a starter. Mm. Like I'm more established. Like so, these are the words that come out of my mouth. I'm more established as a wide receiver than you are as a head coach. Mm. Oh, oh shit! But, oh but my bars, goodness! You know, but right? Bars. I like that. Appreciate <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? So like, I I didn't think that way back then. Now, you know, I've I've grown to a place where it's like, okay, I hear what you're saying, coach. Yeah. And then I'll play it more strategically. But just to answer your question, bro, like you know, like when I said that. As institutionalized, so I'm, I'm, you know, that's why, like, on the hard intake, I can sit back and I lean way, I, I lean towards the player's side, you know, because, yes, I always was like that, but, you know, now that I'm outside of it, you know, it's like, you know, now you're really seeing the whole system. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you know, I got great relationships with the NFL, 
in other leagues. You got deals with the NFL. Yeah. But it's interesting because I, I still call out the NFL when I feel like they're <laughs> doing some flaw shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but it's good, though, because in a way, what you're also doing is carrying the flag for people who don't know better. They don't know to speak up. They don't know to stand up for what they believe in or ask for what they deserve. So it's, it's a good thing. I'm sure there's there's some student athletes out there that see what, what you're doing, how you're moving, what you're saying, and they're like, okay, I need to educate myself. on. I need to be more diplomatic. Yeah. What does he mean by that? If that's right. something that he struggled with, I'm not there yet. I need to get ahead of this, and that's good math for other people. Right. So it's good that you're doing it and doing it in front of people too because right. I'm sure that you're not the only athlete that feels like this or has gone through this, Yeah. but you have a platform. And well, you're using it. Well, I think it's the other way. It's it's more right. so like athletes being more bold and unapologetic. Right. So we didn't see athletes doing podcasts. I was traded from Chicago uh-huh. to New York because I said, you know, I'm going to continue to do my Showtime gig. I was on Showtime, first athlete to be a, f- a full-time broadcaster. Like on my off day, I was flying, taking a PJ from Chicago to New York, landing in Teterboro. Going into the city doing Showtime inside the NFL, and they came in and was like, "Nah, you can't do this." I was like, "All right, well, I guess I ain't gonna play for your team." Mm-hmm. So now you look up, you see other athletes. You know, uh, CJ McCollum is on ESPN. You got all these other athletes Dream doing on. podcasts, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I think athletes are more unapologetic yeah. and bold now. I think that ch- it's like the, the challenge is right. Like, how do you go from and I can't say that because Fifty is 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 balling, Diddy is balling, and Jay Z. You know what? I, and they all bring something different to the culture. Like Hove touched everyone, and that's what I'm trying to do. And so that's where you got to learn to be diplomatic when you're trying to be global. Mm, I see. You know, like. Yeah. And that's where you got to be real smooth in how you do things. Because you can cuss a motherfucker out and not even say a cuss word. And that's what I'm trying to <laughs> learn. Like, I, before, like, Diddy and 50 Day might be to me, like, bah, 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 bah. Yeah. Hope might say something crazy and it's like, did he just cut? <laughs> that was smooth. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Because he be doing that in these little snippets you see on Instagram and stuff like that. Like, when they hit him with the, is that a nice pink suit? Right. <laughs> It's mom. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, that was, you yeah, know, right. you say it a lot without us having to say it. Right, right, right. Yeah, true. That's that's something you, it takes time. <laughs> and and osmosis, being around people that feel and right. think like that and carry themselves like that. People don't realize I'm in sales. So one thing I learned when I, when I was selling cars, I was trying to figure out how are these guys doing this? How are they hitting this number of sales and effortlessly and getting people to say yes and doing all this stuff? My man said, just, just start ear hustling. Start picking up game. You want to learn how something to, how to do something the fastest? Ask right. somebody who's already done it. There's usually two ways to do something. They're going to give you the rule book, and they're going to say, this is how we want you to sell a car. But that veteran is going to say, this is how they want you to do it, but this is how I do it. And figure out your path in between the two. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So osmosis, you got to be around those people to understand what those conversations sound like, look like, mm. and then you can navigate moving forward. That's dope. It's a little and then you go to Jay-Z. You know, if everybody in your clique is rich, your clique is rugged. Nobody will fall because everyone will be each other's crutches. crutches. You know right. what I'm saying? You got to keep a dope circle around you, too. That's a line. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yo, did, when Fat Joe was here, did he talk about that? That line? Yeah. He talked about things specific to that, but no, we didn't speak about that line. Yeah. That, that was there, a Jay-Z line. No, I know. Yep. Uh, but when we had Fat Joe on our, oh, okay. and it was fire. He was He's beautiful, ain't yeah, he, bro? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Ain't, did he oh, pull man. up? He pulled up. What was he listening to when he pulled up? I don't even know. He I'm pulled sure. up. He he pulled up was, a little early. Did he? He, he was, was on time. He he, 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 yeah, he was yeah, on yeah. time. He pulled up in his Rolls Royce. Uh nah. He pulled he up. He was in with some big, peeps, like so. Tahoe. They yeah. they dropped so him he off. Was I low, think, yeah. He was low key. Okay, boom. This is not the day a big after BT Awards. So it was like after doing a big big show. So he's yeah. you know beautiful. Nah, but like that. What you just recited that line we talked about on the show. It's like yo, like. You know, it's like when you build a, a nice circle, you know what I'm saying? Like, we should be able to lean on it, lean mm-hmm. on each other. Yeah. And so, like, you know, we had a beautiful conversation about that line you recited. Yeah. You know, it's like, you you know what I mean? Sometimes you you might be up and you might be down. And it's like, we got to, I got to be, let me, yeah. let me, let me, let me lean sure on you. you you're my crutch yeah. right now. And right. then vice versa. You know who, when you hit, when shit hit the fan, 
and things is tough, you're going to know if you got a tight circle or not. Mm. Because you ain't never supposed to fall. Right. You ain't ever supposed to fall. You're supposed to be able to call on your brother, your sister, and be like, yo, boom. That's where I'm at right now. Hurting, man. That's why mental health is so important. Mm. It's men's mental health, I should say. Because all of it, women, women, but, but yes. women, women are amazing at that. They're gonna call their home girl up. You know what I mean? They they're amazing at it. They got those type of relationships. As men, we're so damn like you know we, we're ego driven. We got our pride that even when we call our boys and we're going through something, but no, nah, it's straight. It's just you know I I ain't even stressing it. You feel me? It's just that you know she she yeah she yeah you know what I mean? Like we that's how we tend to talk to each other when we're. And, you know, you're seeing this more and more coming up. But thanks to people like yourself that have spoken about mental health and how important it is, you're seeing men more and more of the, uh, capable of speaking about what they're really going through instead of just bullshitting and hiding most of it. And, you know what I mean? They're giving, they're giving the truth. Why do you think that's changing? Because people are open about speaking about it. You know, prominent figures are speaking about it out in the open and men no longer feel like they have to put up this shield and tell people, like, you know what, I'm going through something. And I'm I'm hurt. You know how hard it is for a man to say I'm hurt? Mm. I don't think it's that hard. I think people tell you in more ways than one. No, 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 no. no. Hold on. Time out. Time out. Yeah, I like this. And I agree with you. Maybe I missed it. When's the last time you looked at your brother and said, when's the last time you was hurt? You got a lady? No. You got no lady? No. So that means you, you probably you probably you probably got your heart Still broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably had something. Well, yeah. You had a situation. Like, let's like go a there. real relationship. It's did, been a while. Well, did you have a situation someone you thought was going to work out and then didn't, and you was crushed for a little bit? Yeah. Did yeah. you go to your brother and say like, "Yo, I'm fucked up right now"? I went to one because I don't share that with. Too many. Exactly. Why? That's his point. Yeah, that's that's his point. Said, yeah. Women got five, six of them. Yeah. Men, we it can't like yo. Look, look, watch this. Watch this. Watch out. Watch. Watch this. Watch. Watch you laugh. Yeah. Yeah, watch this, bro. Fucking sad right now, dog. Ugh. Look, he's smiling. Bro. <laughs> Cause I'm ready to roast. If you're my homie, I'm like, what's that man? Shake that shit off, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 that's why we can't go. Let's go to the gym, man. Let's go to the gym, man. You just need to work out, bro. Right, but it's like I'm fucking hurt right now. I'm sad. And then if tears come down, yeah. it's yeah. over with. Yeah. yeah, change the subject. Yeah. <laughs> you, hey, you trust? Man, you heard yeah. the, you, uh, the Knicks playing yeah, tonight. Yeah. No, I was just. You no, know, I mean, but but I'm. Uh, but my back yeah, was hurting, bro. so I had took these pills, and that's why. That's why I feel like that right now. It ain't. I ain't. You know, I don't. Right, I, she, I, she wasn't eating that important because because you know I had the other joint on the side. Right, yeah. right. We, we we be discounting that shit. We be but that's who I've that always shit. been. I've always like anytime my boy has ever called me and told me like, "Yo, what you doing right now?" You know, what I mean, oh, I'm going through it. I'm always like, "Okay, well, what are you going through?" Because I know you're gonna sit there and tell me that you know I got three sisters. I got an older brother mm. and three sisters, and I was raised by my mom, and I always had those deep conversations with my mom. It's different. Mm. You know yep. what I mean? And so for me, I'm always like, what are you going through? Because you just saying that right now, I know for 100% certainty. Me just being like, oh, let's go out and have a drink. It's not going to help you. What are you actually going through? What do you feel? And I'll say it like, okay, well, talk to her. And tell her in a different manner. With then Let your pride go for a minute because you're going to put your pride in the way. And when you talk to your girl, you're going to talk to her like, Tuh. you know what I mean? You ain't going to talk to me that way, but tell her that it hurts you. You know how often they're like, nah, it's it's different though, because they, they, as soon as you say that, the panties come off. <laughs> <laughs> and here's why the yeah. panties come off is because men we don't know how to do that. When we can tap into that, and and when I'm using that as like a metaphor almost, but it's like, but that's where the real connection is. You have that emotional intelligence where you can look at your lady or anybody for that matter and be like, yo, I'm hurting. Like, really tap into understanding your emotions. That's beautiful what you just said, bro. Seriously, man. Like, I find, you know, when, you, when you're when you able to connect with your lady on that level, that's where the magic is. Right. Because that's, that's how I come off as men. Men, you know, our hurt come off as anger. And it's like exactly what you're like. It's like, no. Nah. When you look at your lady and be like, damn, babe, that, that made me sad. That, that hurt my feelings. She's like, what? <laughs> For real, it's true. You got to. And then, honest. but then the ones that that might like not receive that or protect that, you know that ain't the one. Mm. Mm. She need help. 
She that man when yeah. 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 Yes, she does. There's nothing worse than if you are a man who doesn't typically open up. The one time you feel like maybe you could or should, and it's not reciprocated or not received well or at all. And it's like that was me being uh, vulnerable. I just right. opened. I just let you in, and you just kind of like, "What you want for dinner, babe?" Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's when that tomorrow. DMX it's track like, come no, out. but like, I kind of need to work this out. Like, right. I'm I'm feeling this right now, and. and Took me a lot to, to bring this up to you. That's right. <laughs> I need this right now. There's right. no, I can't. Men it's don't be one handle of the worst that. things. Men don't mm-hmm. handle that by uh, sitting there having a deeper conversation. They get the DMX track. <laughs> it was Wanda, <laughs> Rashida. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you, start, you start making moves immediately, like, oh, she's going to hurt me like that? Watch what I do. You know what I mean? Watch what I do. That's how men, that's how men react. But, but a lot of the times, they're hurting themselves more, mm. they're setting themselves up worse than what they needed to. You know what I mean? That's why, again, for us having you up here is so huge because this is a conversation you're very comfortable with right. about speaking about mental health, where a lot of people, you're you're really one of those originators mm-hmm. that was out loud about it, of your stature. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just like there's people that tried to speak about it, but they weren't able to really hit home That's right. the way you were. Right. Well, I'm working on self-love right now. A couple weeks ago it was the first time I ever looked in the mirror and told myself I love you. And then the way you know I'm doing yoga and meditation like every every day, like I'm in another transformative phase of my life right now. The last three years been extremely difficult as an entrepreneur building this business. Yeah, and so like I'm I find yoga and meditation to be very impactful for me right now, and I'm like just. On some other stuff, affirmations, and all you know, I'm flowing like you know, I am lying, I am healed, I'm this, I'm that. And then I said, I love you. I'm saying all that to say is like, no, you know what I mean? Like, and this might come off as cocky, no, like, bro, like, I studied when I said I spent my entire off season at Harvard in 2014 studying like transition, I was studying athletes and artists that use their platform or the big screen to do something amazing in nonprofit. Magic Johnson, Keanu Reeves, Boomer Esiason, oh. Doug Flutie, uh, Liv Just Strong, Lance on Armstrong. On. Yeah, all of them. So and I can go on and on. Those are all athletes and artists that did something amazing, like whether in HIV and AIDS, cancer, yeah. you know, um, and Th- things so outside so the sport, you know. Big topics, big scary topics for a lot of people. Say that again. It's it's things outside the sport that sometimes people may not expect to see from those folks. Yeah, but sometimes I, what I was looking at was just like impact. It could have just been education. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like I say all that to say from a self care standpoint is like nah, bro. Like, you know, I was the first in this prime to talk about mental health. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I say that I laid it up because it's from a self, self-love self standpoint. You know what I mean? Sometimes we dumb ourselves down. But when it comes to mental health, you know, like I'm him. You know, respectfully. Like I had to send an email out. I just got this opportunity from the NFL to want me to do something with in Canada. And they're like, yo, we got 40000 for a year, uh, a month. Uh, forty got 40000 for you for an hour and a half appearance. Thank you so much. I love working with you guys. Y'all always bless me. Yeah. But what I realized over the last couple of months is that my my fee should actually be seventy five thousand. Yeah. Because I was boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you're able to understand who you are, you understand your value. You know what I'm saying? And you have the confidence, and you're gonna protect that. Why am I showing up for twenty five thousand or forty thousand dollars? And that's a lot of money for a lot of people for an hour. Why would I do that when, you know, you got speakers around the world that are experts in their space making one hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred thousand? Mm-hmm. Because the most time. powerful thing um, when it comes to mental health is hearing from the patients. Because when you're struggling, I don't want to hear from a clinician. I don't want to hear from a doctor. They're not even speaking the same language. In the DSM five, and then I don't know what that means. But when when I get up there and speak, or Ricky Williams, or Kevin Love, yeah. or Simone Biles, and they say, "Man, 
I just can't get out of bed. I can't do X, Y, and Z. Everybody lean in. Okay. And then what do you say? That's what matters the most. And so that's what matters the most is, <clears throat> you know, um, in this space is like patience standing up and talking about their experience. And so there might be a lot of people out there. What well, I know there's a lot of people out there right now that may be struggling. You don't have to be living with a diagnosis. It could just be stress. If you hurting, bro, like just especially men, go to your brother. That don't work. Seek a therapist. Some might, some of us may need to put down the 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 the, the drinks and uh and the drugs and like yeah. yeah, but it you you can do it. You can do it. You know, sh- like we all been through a lot. And probably a lot of people that's watching this podcast been through a lot. But man, if you get the help you need, you can totally change your life around. Turn it around. And uh. you're not you're not a coward for doing it. You know, you're not a coward for talking to a therapist. People see that as weak. You know what I that's mean? Right. You might it might it might only take you one session or three sessions or forty sessions. Your 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 life is different and your your story is different than everybody else's. It might be a good friend of yours that's able to do that for you. It might be your woman at home. Hopefully. You know what I mean? Hopefully yeah. for sure, but it might be. And and when you open that door up, your relationship is going to improve like crazy. And the panties it, come off. It, and the panties keep coming <laughs> off. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You trying to be serious? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I like it, though. That's me. That's me, guys. I get, I get no, lost for being me. <laughs> Yo, shout no, out no. to the fans, too. Uh, we got Spaced Out Podcast just sent over some uh, a super chat. They said, Brandon, as a former NFL player who has been open about your own mental health struggles, how do you think the sports industry can better support athletes in managing their mental health? It ain't even about that. Like, I think we do a great job of, like, we have resources and we have uh, access to a lot. Like, you know, I was able to change my life because of the NFL, right, because they had access to McLean Hospital, you know, um, and the outpatient program that I was able to get into. I think it's just what you said earlier, just like continue to dive into the conversation. And we're doing that now. The NBA, the NFL is doing that when it comes to some people in tennis, which is not like a union or anything. It's like, yo, this is what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. So it's more so from an awareness standpoint. Just keep having those conversations because the more we talk about it, the more others look in the mirror and be like, damn, that might be me. Or damn, that is me. And I'm going to go call somebody. You know how many calls? Shit, I was just in Vegas a couple weeks ago for the fight, uh, Canelo and Charlo. Mm. And the family stopped me. I'm in the wind. I'm drinking a little bit with my lady. And this family, you know, so I'm like in a different zone. (laughs) And this family stopped me. like, oh, my goodness. Brandon, like, they got, and then their eyes start welling up. I'm trying to go get another <laughs> yeah. drink. I'm trying to go to the black drink. And it's like, you saved my daughter's life. I'm like, what are you talking about? It was like, she watched your video on YouTube. You talking about mental health and what you did. And, you know, she was about to commit suicide. But when she saw that, she then walked into our room and said, wow. you know, I want to go get help. Wow. Damn. Right? So, like, spoke up. that's the space that we're in. Wow. You know, we need more Simone Biles and Naomi Osaka's Kevin Loves of the world, the Dak Prescott's of the world. Just having this conversation, it's very powerful. Yeah. Definitely. Did did their family let you walk through? <laughs> oh, yeah, we talked for a minute. Just like any time. <laughs> now you flipped it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting there like, you know, but, you know, and I try not to get numb to it because it happens a lot for me. You know, I've been doing this. Or that's why I said I'm him, and I, you know, I say that humbly, but it's that's what me saying that and doing that is me basically looking in the mirror and saying, bro, like I'm, yeah. I'm proud, I'm talking to myself, I'm not talking to anybody. So there's a lot of people who say I'm cocky. It's like I love you, I'm proud of you, good job, keep fucking going, mm. you know, because it's hard. And so, you know, I've had so many stories like that, and I try not to get numb to that. So, yes, I stopped, and I like I just sat there and just, like, embraced it. I was like, okay, this is the fuel that I need to keep going. Because I already know who I am. Like, I know, you know, m- the story is resonating globally and it's helping so many people. Like, it's every day, bro. Like, I was flying in the airport, coming back. I was just in uh, Soho. I was in New York just today mm-hmm. at, like, 1 o'clock. Yeah. 
Like, I'm now <laughs> coming here for this. Like, I was just in New York and just walking through uh, Newark Airport. Guy stopped me like, yeah, man, I want to take a selfie with you. Boom. And then he's like, man, I love what you're doing, mental health. I work in a mental health space. So every day I'm having these conversations. Yeah. Yeah. So it's beautiful. It's like, fuck, man, that's such a dope thing to be in a position where people, you know, know me as Brandon Marshall, football player, but they talking to me as Brandon Marshall mm. in the mental health space. Mm. Hello. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. Question. Brandon Marshall, the human being. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 Not the number. Mm -hmm. you know? um, where would you say you get your best introspective work outside of therapy for those who are scared to go to therapy or yeah. pay a professional or – you know, speak to some of their closest individuals out of fear of being judged <clears throat> for that a long time because it takes takes individual work. Right. What are some good ways to find that type of uh, work? So I'm going to be a little aggressive here, you know, because a lot of people need to hear this. Stop fucking being scared. Stop being a little pussy mm -hmm. and go get help. Right. Like we keep, uh, what, what's the, uh, 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 like, it's okay. <laughs> you said it. Yeah. Go get fucking help. Therapy's okay. But I will also say, though, like, you know, for me right now, it's yoga and meditation. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still talking to a therapist, um, and I will always have a, I have a family therapist. So, like, my sister last night, I, this morning I wake up, and I'm in Brooklyn. Boom. My sister, all right, as soon as I wake up, it's a 4, 4 a.m. text message. I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and then at 7 a.m., she called me, but I'm ready to get out the door to go to you Soul Cycle yeah. and fucking Flatiron. <laughs> and now I got to talk to her for 30 minutes. And she talking to me about all these things, and I'm just like, man, like, I don't got time for this. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, like, um, yeah, I got sidetracked again. But, uh, <laughs> but, 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 like, you know. Um, You're talking about, like, the... Um, you know, not being afraid to ask for help, but you got a family therapist. Oh, so, 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 yeah, there you go. Yeah. So my sister, she, she, she's hitting me up, and I'm like, control what you can control. I've already been through this for 12 years. I'm telling you, stop talking. I'm telling you what it is. Listen to me. And then she's like, yeah, I also, you know, text Gail at 1.30 in the morning. I call Gail at 1.30 in the morning. I'm like... Why you call Gail? Like, or there, this, this is the family therapist. Anybody can call her. Why you call her at one thirty? Yeah, it was like that's not fair to Gail. It's not fair to Gail. Who she might be laying with, like whatever her situation is. Shout out to Gail. Yeah, like you could be dealing with. You can be. You, you need to be in control of this. And so, like, yes, I. Yeah, you know, for those who need to hear that, therapy's okay. Stop acting like a. Like it's okay, but then like there's so many alternatives. Right. For those who may be a little nervous and I would say start with just checking in on your people. So you're like your homies, your girls, like boom. And then yoga has been beautiful and meditation has been beautiful for me. Mm -hmm. And then what we I, we have to understand about all these spaces, whether it's yoga, meditation, somebody walking you through talk therapy, et cetera, et cetera. It's like the first one may not be the right one. The fifth one might not be the right one, but keep keep looking. Yeah. It's a connection. Keep the same way you're looking yeah. for that soulmate when it comes to relationships or friendship yeah. is the same thing you got to be looking for when it comes to that person that can hit you mentally. Mm, you yeah. know? So just because a lot of people get discouraged when they're like, this therapist sucks. You're probably right. <laughs> but keep going. But did you go get a second opinion, right? Right. Or did you, you just go. say, oh, it's not for me? But you barely even scratched the surface. There you go. I'll tell you yeah. what, for men, because my personal experience for men, we got to be okay with that and speaking about it. Because as men, you'll get bashed. I don't like, I didn't <clears> like my therapist. Got to find another one. Oh, that's because that's who you are, it's right? You. Like, that's your ego. Your ego, you think you know more than the therapist. Like, that, it wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not for me, champ. Like, the this, this shit you're talking about, it ain't me. But you explored it. You know it. what I'm saying? Like, you gave it well, a shot. Yeah, and then, well, and then I found somebody who was, mm. like, when I had that conversation with, I'm like, ah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I get that. I hear Click. that. It feels, it feels right. You know that's what I mean? Right. Because, like, sometimes, right, like, it's so, cl it's so clinical and so, like, stuffy. And it's like, you come from Buffalo, and a lot of people don't know, like, there's, yeah. there's, and I, I don't know your like situation, me. but there, like, Buffalo could be tough. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It breeds a lot of tough people. And so, like, there's a, a specific man or woman that, that need to be able to speak to you to break through. Yeah, and, but, like, if you're from Harvard, and, but you come from, uh, you're, you're Harvard grad, but you come, you, you from, uh, uh, 
Stanford, Connecticut, <laughs> there's a good chance that you are not going to be able to connect. Right, yeah. right. Stanford grad, Harvard grad, Stanford uh, uh, raised, Harvard grad, talking yeah. to somebody from yeah. the, that side of Buffalo. Yeah. There's a good chance well, it might not My name is Neil. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> oh, shit. What do you got to do? Right. It's going to be okay. I promise you. Now you're getting what happened, what, your love. what happened for me, the breakthrough for me in therapy was in 2011. I was at uh, McLean Hospital in the outpatient program. And um, a therapist, I was sitting here. I, and I was thinking therapy was like you laying on the couch like what you see in the movies and you just no talking. Pain. Right. And so that's what I, but I wasn't getting that. And so I was a little, like, shocked. And I was there for, like, a month and a half. I was there for three months total, but uh, this was, like, the uh, halfway point. So it was a month and a half in. And so I came in. I just started snapping. I'm like, fuck, this motherfucker ain't listening to me. da 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 I ain't signing up for this shit. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he looked at me and said, it's everybody else's fault. You keep pointing a finger at everybody else. It's this person, that person, your girl, your coach, your player. da 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 It's everybody else's fault. And at that time, like, I went from, like, I'm the lion to, like, fall, fell back. Mm. And when I fell back, immediately, the thing that hit me was, like, oh, shit. He sound like a coach. Ooh. I've been trained my entire life since I was five years old. Oh. Where a coach talked to me that way. Mm -hmm. Now, some would say it's not healthy, whatever. And he would say it's not healthy. He hates when I tell this story because, like, he knew what it took to get to me. And when I heard wow. that, I was like, "Ooh, wow. right!" Like that's that's all. That's how I'm that's trained. Deep. Yeah, I needed that. And then with everything that followed after that, I was like, "Control what you control," and da da da. And that's when I start pointing the finger at everybody else, and I said, "Okay, how did I contribute to this situation? Was it thirty percent, forty percent, seventy percent, hundred percent? Like, how did I <laughs> right. contribute and own it and be a re yeah and own it? Yeah. So, like, you know, to your point." You know what I'm saying? Like, keep going, find who fits for you. But I do believe, and I might be out of pocket here because I'm not a scientist or nothing, but, like, I'm like, yo, you got to meet people where they at. Mm -hmm. And not every yeah. therapist can do that. True. It's unfortunate because a lot of people are expecting that, but a lot of people don't ain't hearing this from people. Where it's like, no, you can try a different therapist. Your first experience was terrible, but doesn't mean that this is not the right thing for you. Yeah. I just don't feel like it should be an end-all, be-all. Um, that's why I was saying, like, what could you do outside of a therapist? Because yeah. the therapist can't do it for you. They can help you map it out and mm -hmm. help you kind of break things down and maybe take a step back and zoom out a little bit. But you got some work to do on your own, too. You know, you have to you know, go back to a, a slightly coachable mind state and be open to this new information. Because one thing that happens, and this is a great work track we use in sales, I was operating based on the information I had at that time. Know, now that new information is provided, I can act accordingly. Mm -hmm. I can navigate moving further. So maybe I just wasn't privy to this stuff, you know, out, out the gate. I don't know. It's, I think I think people are fearful of voicing themselves to a stranger. Right, for sure. But I think they can give you some of the best outside perspective looking in, non-biased. Like you said, like, you keep blaming everybody else, like really right. giving it to right. you because I don't owe you nothing. Right. You know, this is what it is, and this is what I see. Right. And it working that out. That's right. I don't know. Do I want to real quickly, I, like, I love y'all dynamic. Appreciate it. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> yeah, like, y'all <laughs> dope. Like, because chemistry and continuity is everything in podcasts. Mm. It's like, how the, how the hell y'all meet? Bought a car from him. Uh, what kind of car? Strictly transaction. Mercedes. The first one I ever got. Big money. Yeah, well, well, it wasn't big money in the beginning, but it was it was from a what? Did you get an what? SLS or something? Yeah, nah, I got the uh, E three fifty. Yeah, I had to listen to it was before Nipsey passed, mm -hmm. and on the on the test ride we were testing a BMW or a Benz. I was like, the only way I'm gonna figure this out if I could play some Nip. Mm -hmm. Let me play my music. Got to test the and, sound, uh, and I played Hustle and Motivate. Hustle and motivate. Yeah. Oh, that's fire. I wish I know we can't play it because we? we're on YouTube. Yeah, because they'll take it off. Yeah, they'll take it oh, off. Okay. Yeah, Ooh, hustle and motivate. I was listening to that. It was 2018? 17? So. 17? Or, no, 18. It had to be 18. Just the way that song come because, off. You no, know, maybe it was 17. Hustle and motivate. Yeah, yeah. I was listening to that. Drive. They think I know the way. Ooh, yeah, I was it. listening to him since like 2011. I, you know how many people I pushed and said Nipsey Hustle's great? 
See, you was on him since 2011. Yeah, early. He, he tried. Nah. Everybody, <laughs> everybody that knows me. Yeah, yeah okay. Yo, I knew him. No. Everybody yeah, right. that knows me knows it. Yeah, 2011. I, I, fact, bro. I, I could show you messages in my phone that my boy said. I was I was in church, and he passed, and uh, my boy sent a message on my phone saying. I don't even want to tell this dude because he's going to get all emotional about it, but Nipsey Hussle just passed. You know what I mean? That's how much... Uh, back in 2010, I caught a case. Mm-hmm. Um, Nipsey Hussle literally made me feel like I was going to be okay. Wow. Tough. It, it was just... There was so much, you know, like mailbox money type dude. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's talking about, uh, the, you know, the, the marathon continues. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like listening to him... I don't know what it was. I just felt like he was the most motivational speaker. He had that. Uh, he had an album that came out where it was a hundred dollar album, mm-hmm. and so nobody thought like, what, "Why is this dude selling his album for a hundred dollars? Who the hell does he think he is?" Really, I didn't even. I never heard this part yeah. of the story go. So he so, so he had an album that his first album was a hundred dollars. No, not his first right. album, but he dropped a hundred dollar album. He said, and "This is what it's worth." Yeah, wow. not a ten dollar album, not a twenty dollar double. And he disc, was getting nothing. bashed. And then Jay-Z bought a 1,000 copies. <laughs> what year was this? Gotta look 2010? That one up. 2011. Right around there. About a dollar album. And it, it, like, I, always, I always just thought Nipsey was different. And so when he started getting big, I was, I'm telling you, this is before he passed. I got the car from him, did that. And I, I posted up a picture with me in the car because I felt like the man is my first Benz. Hey, and I put the victory lap logo. In Miami, I now. put the victory lap logo on my picture and I posted that picture. And when he passed, it was like one of the most crushing moments for me that I could remember. I, Stack Bundles was the other one because I was, again, I was a huge Joe Budden fan. Um, so when Stack Bundles passed was big and Pac was huge. Selena was huge. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican. You know what I mean? Right. Growing up in my, my household... Uh, 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 uh. You know what I mean? See, Len, I was top dog. There was Pac. Um, but Nipsey was the one that impacted me the most. Wow. Yep. And oh, I so, met him through that. Yeah, bro. So, and, be, but, and I brought this up. But go ahead, finish. So. No, so I met him through that. And that's fire. We, like, I, I told him from the first day, I'm like, yo, we got to go out and drink sometime or something. You know what right. I mean? Like, he's cool as hell. Right. That dude dealt with me for like 12 and a half hours. My credit wasn't right. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I heard the, the kid spend. More than $9,999. You don't want to put that in the IRS. And I'm like, I'm not putting more than that down. You know what I mean? Because right. I had my career in the past, you know? Right. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So I had my career in the past. Yeah. So I'm like, man, how do, I, how do I handle this? And then he, he was super cool about it. Because I'm like, yo, I'm going to be honest with you. I got more cash in there. But I'm not giving you more right. cash in there. So this is what you got to figure out. I went home. And he was like, I'm going to try to figure this out for you. It was cool. And then, and then we ended up linking. And then that's how we got into this. It's interesting. It's like, you know, I, I feel like my space, I can't wait to get into a space where I can just, like, identify talent and develop shows. Like, that's full time. But I can see the chemistry between you guys, like, your perspective. And I don't even know, you, you know, either one of y'all's, like, background like that. But it's different. But the chemistry just and the synergy just match. Appreciate that. So it's dope. It's dope. Like y'all, y'all just need to keep going. Y'all gonna win. I y'all can't wait. Appreciate that. Yeah. Something about that is is true. We're very alike, but we're very different. Right. You know, I don't know if you're in a, a, a astrology horoscopes and all. No, no that's a, that's usually that's usually ladies. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no, we yeah, avoid that up playing. here. Okay, okay. We avoid that up here. But <laughs> I'm to, just playing to, like to people that that makes sense to. Yeah, they're, we're both Leos, so we're not supposed to really like. We're, we're supposed to, we're supposed to connect, but we're also supposed to clash. Yeah. But we know how to navigate in for the greatest right. cause. Like let's meet in the middle. And That's right. Sometimes he's I'm I'm a lot more passive. I'm a lot more calm. I like right. to listen more and then speak. But he's like, right. he'll, he'll poke and prod and like right. get the party started. So when, when it's the both of us, yeah. One dynamic that I love, uh, Breakfast Club. Mm. You got Charlemagne, the antagonist. He he gonna get stuff started. Yeah. You got uh, Envy who might pose another position or perspective yeah. and then Angela Yee gonna say both of y'all are wrong now 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 right right let me give you this feminine tone or let me give you this different and then they're gonna sell you a house <laughs> that's, <laughs> not, but that's what I'm saying that's they the got, dynamic do they have a job opening do they have a job opening? I know you're going somewhere I'm so sorry I'm so sorry no, I'm so sorry are, are 
are you because you're like more like DJ Envy? It, are, you, are, are you going to put your name in the hat? And yeah, leave? Yeah, yeah. Are you leaving? No, are you no. leaving? Are you are you loyal? Absolutely. <laughs> you're not. So you're not leaving. We here this no, public. We here, bro. We here. You're yeah. here. We okay. Here. Is DJ Envy gonna be okay? <laughs> um, I hope he I think is. I, I he mean, will I hope be. I can't speak dirt. for the rest of them. I think out of everybody, he's in the best position. Okay. He's also. Uh, he has a team, probably better than a lot of those other guys. You see guys. this? He's a nice guy. Uh, uh, no, he does, yeah, though. Yeah. Like no, let's be teams. real, though. Yeah, if yeah. anybody going to go to court and try to win this shit, it's going to be Envy versus a lot of the other lower-level dudes that I see. Like, if anything, he might skate partly because of his notoriety yeah. and, and what he represents and the other stuff that he does involve. He could kind of play this off like, that wasn't what I was trying to do. Look at all the other yeah. stuff I do. This was just something are, I got I, caught I, up I in. I just, what do first, you think? first time I found out that you are DJ Envy because you just sold us a great story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think you think Envy knew ex- what he was, what do you think? You I think, think at some point he might have caught a hint of it, but he was already too deep. I think he himself was a victim as well. Oh, wow. I believe that. His fame was used to tie in all these other people. Let's just call it what it is. Who heard of that other guy before? Before you know it, he's on a breakfast club? Right. Yeah, he Selling, might be a shark. Like, he's the mastermind. No, Cesar Pena, what well, I, I think that's his name, right? I think um, that dude might be a shark. I think he I think he knew exactly what I he think was if doing he got in too deep. He's like, hey, I'm taking this boy down for the ride right now. I and think they, I think he was trying real. to do something good though, because he was the, the pitch that you hear or see, because obviously I don't know them. I was But why did Joe roles. Budden tell him he's going to he was like, Yeah, he's the surprise he's jump. Came, yeah. From did the you jump. see that? Yeah, I can't. I can't. He told him right from the jump. So he Joey, said, Joey, Joey I must have knew. A, I hit a clue. I hit yeah. a uh, fifty. I hit a uh, Joe button. Yeah, and Joe was like, "It's a Ponzi." Yeah, he was right. <laughs> and you go to jail. Hey, <laughs> you go to jail. It's that all time music. Hey. Shout out Joey. Joey, good job. You are. You knew it. To save him. Now we could still keep the Joe Button podcast. <laughs> that one's gonna stay. You know what I mean? It might be the uh, the brunch club now. But it is what it is. Something I didn't want to leave, right? <laughs> Something I didn't want to leave before before we went past that because we, we dipped off and you were talking about the dynamic. When you're talking about mental health and you're talking about speaking to other people, what he said is something that I do that's super important. Sometimes do some yoga, meditate, speak to yourself. Mm. Not every time do you have to reach outside to speak to somebody. Sometimes you just got to calm yourself down and speak to yourself. Mm, that's right. You know what I mean? That, and that's what meditation does. Like, just yesterday, I'm chilling with my son. I literally threw a uh, YouTube video on meditation, guided meditation, and I just kicked it with him. Mm. And he's, he's 19 months. Wow. So I'm just sitting there with him, and he, he was calm. And you know what I mean? I'm like, got him in a calm space because my, my neck's killing me right now. I'm trying to... <laughs> Relax. And sometimes, like that, that pain we feel in our body is due to stress, and we're not. You know what I mean? We're not. We're not taking it in. Mm-hmm. We're not talking to ourselves. We're not saying it's going to be okay. We're not saying I love you to yourself. You know it's what good. I mean? And that when you get that moment to meditate, I, I wish everybody could have just a small moment in their day to meditate. Whether it's that you're you're in the shower and you're meditating, whether that. You're taking a ride and, well, I guess don't meditate in the car. I mean, we don't want you to go off the road. No, but, no, but, no. But no, taking I'm, a minute. I, no, the car is good. Yeah, because I do it. I just I'm, I just know in all the meditation that I listen to, the yeah, guided you, ones, they say, well, do not do this in the car. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm doing it in the car. Well, I, I what I practice, good. there's different forms of it. What I practice in the car is like mindfulness. So, mm-hmm. like, I'll take the glasses off, see the, the actual, you know, sun, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, the moon. Roll the window down here. Take the glasses feel the off while you're driving. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You can't take the glasses off. No, no, I don't got glasses. I'm just saying, just, just whatever. Like a shade. I, it's now like that I know what you're not, riding, not I'm going to stay out the way. Not oh, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. the shades. Was you, you. Did you expect me to pull up in that car? Are you shocked? <sighs> nah, because I think it's fire. Okay. So, no, I'm not shocked. You sure. can tell the people what I'm driving. It's it's a big ass truck. I don't know what truck it is. <laughs> I had a truck the one time and I did specific. that. Yeah. So when I saw that, I'm like, damn. This shit's fire. I'm about to go back to trucks. Everybody look at me like I'm crazy when I pull up there. Because for years I was pulling up in like a Rolls Royce or uh, Mercedes SLS with the wings, the gold wings. Nice. Right? Like that. Or the G Wag, whatever. So like now it's like I had all of that shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I flew everywhere. Now it's about like. Investing in my company, my ideas, my dream, my vision. So, you know, 
Next time I come, no, nah, I ain't gonna be next time because I this is dope. I like y'all. Y'all have me back. I appreciate that, bro. But like, probably the next time I come back, <clears throat> I'll probably no. I ain't. I don't know. <laughs> I can't control it. But I'm trying to come, Bugatti. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's a, here's a crazy story, right? Because where he's going with it is exactly something that just happened to my boy. Shout out to my boy Adam Merch, uh, right? Yeah. Legend. He's got uh, like the best F one fifty you could get. Okay. Right. He had the like Ferrari, the, the, the Rolls Royce, the Lamborghini, the Audis. He had it all. And then all of a sudden he got the the truck. And everybody was like, what, what happened? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Did he lose his money? Did something okay? happen? Like, why yeah. does he have the, the truck? And I, I, had, I was talking to him. And bef- even before, he was like, it's just, you know, like all the fancy cars and everything. Like, he's like, but I just, I just love my truck. Yeah, now, it's yeah, the fanciest yeah. of them all, right? Like, it's not, it's not a cheap truck. But he loves his truck. When I tell you loves his truck, like he'll t- anytime he picks you up, it's like, no, right. I mean, like open the door, like you see this thing, this is amazing. Love <laughs> yeah, he's excited about, it. yeah. But now he's back to the Ferrari. He's back. To the- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a process. Yeah. It's like how you feel today. Yeah, I feel That's like you definitely thing. need a a, a truck, a, a vehicle that you truly enjoy. It's not just for appearances. It's like this my slider. This is what I really don't mind pulling up in. What you looking for today, Derek? Give me, give me. What I love about what I love about my, seen that my 350, that was good. Yeah, yeah. It was good. Like Randy Moss. Like, Ooh. Like okay, okay. What I love about <clears throat> my truck is like, which truck is it? It's F three fifty three. Okay. Yeah, you know. But but you I did bought it, it used. Diesel. Okay. Yep, diesel. Yeah, bought it used. You have that forever. No. My dream garage is uh, because <clears throat> I want to have a crazy garage and I just want a bunch of old schools. I'm a 60, 69, and 72 guy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm more of an old school. I'm, I'm an old school guy over exotic, right? So even me talking about Bugatti, um, you know, that's different. Like that hit me different. Rolls Royce, I brought my Rolls Royce to Rafe uh, used and, um, you know, I was fired. Like that was the best ride I've ever had. Like that that Rafe is is beautiful, yeah. but like the reason why I appreciate my F three fifty because it's like every time I jump into it, it reminds me of the sacrifice and the direction. Uh, what I'm talking about. It's like, uh-huh. yo, it's okay. Like you had it all. Right. You know what I'm saying? Take that money. You don't need to be doing that. Go. They better cut a check. That that, that money, <laughs> that insurance check per month is a social media manager. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Cause like my vision for what I'm building is like, you know, in three years could I be pushing a billion dollar valuation? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's 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 yeah. like what I, I I live every day like thinking about that. Where'd so. you where'd, where'd you get all this forward thinking from? Was it kind of always instilled in you? Was this like from school time? <clears throat> Was there somebody that said, "Listen, man, you got to have a plan"? Like, yeah. Uh, listen, I think that I think that you know. God places people in different places in the, in in like the history of the of our world, you know. Um, but the number one contributor to how I think how I operate is my father. Mm. Me okay. and my father is beefing. We don't really talk, but he was a big in the streets. Okay, up north. Okay, and so like that hustle mindset and mentality. Is where I like get a lot of that from, yeah. you know. So like, I will have to say, outside of God, is my father. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like my dad was dope boy. I mean, he wasn't even a dope boy. It was like a he was uh, the man. He, yeah, he was yeah. like I wouldn't call him a kingpin. You know what I'm saying? But like he he was a kingpin. <laughs> you know, we talking about from Pittsburgh to Miami, from from That's Pittsburgh cool. to Queens, all in New York, yeah, all over, but he was forward thinking. Yeah. Yo, let me put this into real estate. Let me go open up this LLC, this company, da da da. And so, like, I just I grew up watching that, and we w- we would have like serious conversations when I was younger. Mm. And so, like that forward thinking comes from my father. Mm. Nice, yeah. That's valuable. You never really know valuable. where it comes from, and and it takes us a while to understand that too. You know, like, yeah, I mean, I mean my father wasn't around much, mm-hmm. but it took a it took a while. 
I was probably late in my 20s before I'm like, damn, I'm just like this motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. And, and, That's and right. Another, another dope thing you said that people have been starting to speak about, on, especially on this platform, is like, God. Mm. Yep. Why, is, why is that so outside of the conversation now? You know That's what I mean? Good. Like, why? Why That's can't good. that be spoken about? Why is that like frowned upon? Like, it's that's deep. Yeah, you brought up God earlier. I mean, He totally transformed my life. Like, I was already making. I was playing for the Dolphins in 2011. That's when I gave my life to Christ and totally changed my life and everything I was thinking. And then a year later is when I ended up working on my mind at McLean. So, like, yeah, God, bro. Powerful. Yeah. So Miami Dolphins caused you to start. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. I, you know, I, I always say the Miami Dolphins is a one night stand. Yeah. It's a good one night stand. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, that's why I said one night stand. I like this. Well, I like this. Well, no, yeah. no, no. A one night stand, I guess, I guess a one night stand could be. Yeah, I'm good. too emotional. Like, I, I'm a, I ain't going to say it like that, but I like love. Yeah. And so, like, I don't, I don't want no one night stand. I want to. I'm trying to have you all the time. So, like, yeah. I always look at one night stand as a very bad thing. The Miami <laughs> Dolphins sucked back then. They better. Than <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah. Management. It was more so management. They only lost That's once this year. Right. We'll see. To the to your boys, yeah, Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buffalo whooped them fifty to twenty. Yeah. Yeah, he was happy we'll see what happened. But listen, football season don't start till uh, post November. I agree. So, so many that? people talk like, I'm like, stop. Look, so many people gamble and shit like that and whatever. And they every every gambler knows everything about sports. Well, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> okay. Right, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> you thing, gamble? Keep, keep posting. Nah, I used to. And then I realized how wrong I was. And I just put I just put this, uh, I just put this post out recently. And I, I was telling people like, yo. We, we all share our opinions and we fight about it. And we all think we're right. If you ain't in the game, Shut leave up. it alone. You know what I mean? Because me too, because I'm, I'm Cause vocal. And I know. Like, I, I know that I'm in there just to talk shit. I know what I'm doing. Right? I'm, I'm pissing people off. I know Stirring it. But I also know at the end of the day, You're I legitimately, yeah, I legitimately <laughs> don't smile, know, though. Smile, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I legitimately, <laughs> stop telling me, oh, well, this, no, trust me, that when this game happens, and da 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 and being so, like, convinced because at the end of the day you never played the sport <laughs> you actually don't know what the fuck is going nah bro trust me when this happens all right go ahead put yo, ten thousand throw ten thousand on it Out of there. yeah you got it go you ahead throw it. ten thousand when you lose don't call me <laughs> don't i'll call you <laughs> you know what i mean i'll be our first one on the line before the game is over i'm like oh how's that going you know You're what i mean troll yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why I love y'all together. Yeah. <laughs> it's just until, the way it until he leaves and goes to the breakfast club. Yeah. Nah, 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 you're definitely going. Nah. If the breakfast club it. calls you, you get right a now, house, you get a house. You if get DJ, a house. if DJ Envy go down and we praying that he's okay, right? But if DJ Envy goes down and they come and say, "Boom," here you go. I'll do a segment. I'll do a. First of all, what we talking about? I ain't even okay. So let's say, let's say, let's say, look, let's say they give you uh, 1.5 million for how long? What do you mean? Need, year, I need terms, per, year, I need, per year, per year, and benefits if I have the opportunity and to, 401k. But I'm, 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 bro, answer the question, bro. I'm going to a fault. It's Just a problem. answer the question, bro. Are you <laughs> going or truth. not? This is the truth. I'm going with the option to bring them with me. Somehow, some man is See, some fashion. No, because you got to be. But he, how, how did I get this opportunity? I got to remember who brought me to the he dance. Gone. He gone. How did, I get, how, did, how did I get to the dance, right, by doing this? How was this facilitated through my man? So how would I look to go over there and act like it's all gravy, but this is how I got my start? I'm loyal to a fault. He can attest. Now, I will I say promise that. I you, I, I, He's gone. I, 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 you know what? I don't think fault. he'll be gone. Hey. Yeah. He's gone. <laughs> 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 He just said, I'm taking you with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, damn, I got to leave the damn <laughs> wrong. So let's put it this way. <laughs> look, look, I put him on the spot. <laughs> so, so. This might be right, my last the, episode. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so you get the opportunity. And they and you just like, boom. I love this. Now, what I need is I'm bringing my team with me in our show. 
So it's a package deal. Uh -huh. But they look at you and they say, no. Then yeah. what? I believe in this podcast enough to not go. Okay, cool. I believe I truly, that. I, tr I truly right, do. All right, cool. I'm proud of what we got here, man. Like, yeah. we did the shows, three people in the live, no comments. We talking to ourselves, and, you know, we did that. A couple hundred episodes. Like, 146 is what we posted. Oh. You feel me? We, we've had conversations out. Sometimes we're on the phone like, bro, we got to save this Where to the podcast. From? I'm from down here. Where? Born raised. So, I was born in Miami till I was nine. So I didn't really know Miami in my adult age, but I got the gist of it from that young. And then we moved to a nice, so in the hood in Miami to nine, then we relocated to like a Jewish neighborhood in Broward. Mm. And then I lived Where? in Palm Beach. Where in Hollywood. Oh, you, okay. Yeah, because he's like, you feel me? You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you feel me? You feel me? I was like, yeah, that's a Florida boy. You feel me? Yeah, you feel me? so. <laughs> uh, a lot of people think I'm from New York. I don't know if I'm with this guy. Yeah, just sometimes I don't nah, talk like a Florida nah, boy. I don't know. He, nah. But uh, no, nah, you because you talk like you corporate. Nah. Oh, I'm a <laughs> business man. No, 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 no. I wouldn't even <laughs> say that because that sounds different. You talk like business, but then if you when I'm listening to you, you feel me? You say little things like, "Oh yeah, he from yeah he, he a Florida boy." Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the, the tri county area between Miami, Broward, and and yeah. Palm Beach. So I've seen a little bit of everything, and what's interesting too. It's a different demographic the further north you go. South Florida is very much like that. Miami is a slightly different pace, That's ecosystem, right. than Broward, than Palm Beach, and all the way up to Ocala, Orlando, Jacksonville. That culture, the language, everything. Yes, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Right. And, yeah. but, but that's what I was saying. So I went, I went from a rough neighborhood to a Jew, a or, like an Orthodox Jewish community. It was a culture mm -hmm. shock in the other direction. Wow. Some people struggle when they're in an uncomfortable neighborhood or something like that. But for me, I was like religious shock and yeah. all the, the, just the different practices and the way they do things and the way they come together as a community. And so I'm picking up game from every different way. And then I play ball and just growing up in South Florida, you have Indian friends and Jewish friends and Muslim friends and white, black, tall, short, wide. Yeah. Everything There's everything. So I'm uh, picking up game from here and there. My father wasn't really in my life. So mm. it, well, the whole time, cause now we, working on that right so That's it's dope. a it's yeah. a process and with that so i pick up game from friends from music from culture from podcasts guys right, like right, you speaking right, right right so i'm picking up game from everybody so sometimes i speak with a twang sometimes i got goals in my mouth but mm. when i go to these business meetings my pants are on my waist and i'm That's looking right. you in your eyes That's and right you're it's a different i'm a chameleon it's what i'm learning <laughs> being more diplomatic mm -hmm. that's what's up it's something that you got goals yeah. Really? Yeah, Come on. You're from the South. You got a six pack? <laughs> eight, but it's okay. Is it eight? <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 he's counting. No. <laughs> no, but. Y'all silly, yo. <laughs> but seriously speaking, I'm also. Uh, I, the term is racially ambiguous. So people. Break so, that down. So both my parents are mixed. So mm -hmm. I'm twice mixed, my sister and I. My mom is Indian and Chinese. My dad is German and Cuban. But they're born and raised in Jamaica. Their parents were born and raised in Jamaica. So we're Jamaican. Jamaican flag, music, culture. I seen that on your wrist. I was like, oh, he just went to Montego Bay. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I, I, like, 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 I don't got the vacation <laughs> braids. Like the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what that looks like. <laughs> but I'll, I'll first appear. No, it's, it's my whole life. My, my, so... <laughs> People speak to me in Spanish. People look at me like I might, you know, be Filipino or right. I look like The Rock. You look like this person. You look like that person. Coming up in school, they're just I didn't, being nice. I didn't know where the we rock. were from. <laughs> I was just tall, brown, and Polynesian. I don't yeah, yeah, know. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Now nah, you, you do. I can see it. He, he got. He got a Halloween picture. He was, but but people is growing up. I didn't know that I was different or that I wasn't white or black or Spanish. I'm, I'm just looking at it. My sister's his skin color. Mm -hmm. We're from the same parents, just mixed differently. It was only when a teacher asked me, where are you from? I said, Miami. She said, no, no, where are you from? And I was like, where are we from? And I realized there were certain things. This is when I started my journey looking inwards. I don't, she said, uh, where are your people from? I said, Jamaica. And I was like, damn. I go back to ask my mom, where are we from? And she starts giving me the layout. And I'm like, what, really? And I realized there's a lot that I don't know about myself. And there's a lot that I wouldn't be able to pass on to my children by not knowing where we come from. So I started asking her these things. Where are we from? And when do we come here? And what's grandma's name? Mm. Because as long as I was growing up, grandma was grandma. She didn't have a first name. Hmm. 
You see what I'm saying? So I'm like, mom, I'm asking her these questions, and one of the best gifts I ever got, thank, thank for shout out to mom, she gave me a, a family tree. She stopped and made a book and printed out oh, wow. where we're from and when we made the passage from India to Jamaica, and they went there for business and how they moved back to Florida in a big migration because the government, all this stuff. This is right. all stuff I never knew because right. I just didn't have that relationship. Right, right. So it, it, it's been a journey, but it's funny that you say that. A lot of people ask me, where are you from, man? Where you, where you, what is it? Right. And then they say, oh, well, okay, I see you. I see the Asian now. Oh, okay, I see that you got the hair. Because yeah. my skin color is actually Indian. Right. It's not Dominican, Filipino, Puerto Rican, or whatever you might assume. So I've right. had to figure out wh- who I am. But I can also see Jamaican in you, too. Yeah. And not just a travel ban. <laughs> 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 no, he ain't wrong, though. Yeah, right. I'm like, yeah. That's why. Like, it was very touristy. <laughs> yeah. it's very, can you show the people your wrists? <laughs> That's not very touristy. <laughs> 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 I was I was literally sitting here like okay, bro just came back from Jamaica. Oh, five days. Like, you really <laughs> from Jamaica? <laughs> My whole hey, life. Mr. Rusher from the super chat. They wanted to talk about your experience in Chicago. Oh yeah, somebody asked. They mm. said, uh, "Shout out Tony Boy." Tony was like, "How? Tony boy. How was it? What is he? What do you? How did he word it?" He put it. How did you? He said, "How did bro stay sane in Chicago with the key people like that?" I mean, look. Here, the best way to describe so the question is how did bro stay sane who is it from Tony, Tony boy. boy so Tony Boy asked me how did I stay sane with the quarterback situation in Chicago so best way to describe is like this boom my dad I was talking about earlier I'm living in the Trump Tower 67th floor that's before it. Trump was Trump yeah, okay yeah. so give me a break <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Okay. 45th. So you got D Rose in there, you got Steve Harvey, you got R. Kelly in there as well. Uh, Some uh, other people. My and mind's so, telling me. Stop, stop. <laughs> but my body. And so Trump boom. <laughs> um my dad, I'm come home from practice. My dad walk in, he walking around the city. Everybody know my dad in the city. And he's like, Man, all these people asking me about Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler this, Jay Cutler that. <laughs> It's like, my family, we love Jay Cutler. <laughs> Jay Cutler throw my son the ball 170 times a year. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's nothing bad to say about Jay. Right. He said, we got nothing bad. <laughs> we love Jay. Right? Like, Jay Cutler was feeding me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I get to that, you know, it was difficult because I had 17 quarterbacks in my, in, in my career, 13-year career. That's, like, unheard of. It's crazy. And I was still able to produce at a high level. But... Um, you know, Jay Cutler was one of those guys that was just going to, you know, he was throwing me the ball. So, like, it was a blessing. Yeah. And, 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 and and I say that because, like, at the end of the day, you look at the, you're in this position post-career. It's like, do you take the Super Bowl or do you take the, the individual accolades? you take the team goals or the individual accolades? I'm taking individual accolades all day. Because Shout now. out to the team, always busy PR. <laughs> Shout out my guy Fred Money. <laughs> I've been telling you for a long time. <laughs> I've been telling you for a long time. The Super Bowl's cool. He, you know how he, when he be pitching shows to me, that ass. <laughs> what he be saying? He's a champion. Uh-huh. And I'm like, my boy. Average two point three a year, or two point three a game. Right I'm I'm not going for it. You know what I mean? But yeah, but yeah, but he's a champion. No wonder why he wants to come up there and do talk about. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I'd rather talk to my guy Brandon Marshall. You know what I mean? That actually put in work. I'm not talking to the you know. He got 17 yards a game. Played for one game that year. It's okay. You know, good good job. You know what I mean? I think I think for me, it's about like in this position post career. So I always thought about this. So if you don't have anything, you know what I'm saying? Like it's like that Super Bowl ring ain't gonna take care of Z Ziggy and Zo. You know what I'm saying? But that production did. Hey. You know what I mean? And it sucks. Like you, the ultimate competitors, which I think I I know I was. We want it all. We want the ring. We want. You know, boom, we want the contracts, we want it all. 
But if I had to pick, I'm picking my career, like my production, because my production equals big contracts. Big contracts mm-hmm. equals taking care of my kids, my family, yeah. and the kids' kids. Right. So, like, I'm always – and I don't understand when athletes go out there and be like, yeah, I'm giving a team discount, and I just want to stay here forever. Man, fuck them. <laughs> fuck yeah. that. True. Y'all yeah. got me. Y'all got me. I'm I'm too comfortable with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Y'all got this is the vibe. No, nah, but one one thing I do want to ask you, because your time is valuable. I do appreciate you for coming up here. Uh, you, you talked about our dynamic yeah. in podcasting. You know, you don't have the same crew that you walked in with. That's is right. that from mm-hmm. issues that arose, or is it just like you finding the right yeah. therapist? He's so <laughs> <laughs> <It's> good. He's <laughs> fucking. <laughs> Yo, you're an asshole. <laughs> I said this. I said that. Right. He's what? <laughs> 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 That was good. Yeah. <laughs> he said find the right therapist. <laughs> you got to find the right one. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> All right, so um, new season opens up Monday. And on this Monday's uh, episode, you're going to see me sitting one-on-one. And um, the space that I'm in right now is like, yo, I, we, we've been able to build a brand. And we've done some amazing things, trailblaze. I'm a disruptor. Disruptor, the way you define disruptor is someone who is willing to go as fast as they possibly can, knowing that they're going to burn shit but keep going. And so, like, now I'm in a space where we broke through. Now it's like, all right, slow down. Let's get it right. Right? And <clears throat> so that's what we're going to see Monday um, and moving forward. Um, so to have the discussion, let's talk about this way. So what's y'all situation from a business perspective? Are y'all partners, employees? What what do y'all do? Uh, right now I started it. He's in the game. He's 100% uh, partner in it. And then that's kind of what we're Well, you can't say 100%. 100%. Percent. No, 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 no. So like, he's, right now we don't have much. It's just me making the shows happen, right? And that once What do you mean all, by making you, making the shows happen? financially, um, the team, the people we bring in uh, yeah. right now, that's what I'm doing. Uh, him and I are are hosting it together. You know what I mean? 50-50. Yeah, the ideas of the people that we bring up, him and I converse so, about. So things. what about like, <clears throat> you know, this iPhone comes in and they say, you know, we have $500,000 we want to invest in 10 episodes. How do y'all divvy that up? So I'll tell you this. He's a stubborn bastard. And I mean that by the case is like when, when we have people that pay to come up here to do an interview and stuff like that, I'll sit there and I'll be like, here's this. And he's like, nah, just wait. You put a lot into this, get your money back, right. then we do it. And that's what I mean by when I say 100%, like, I mean, there's a 100% chance that him and I, like, whatever split he wants, it's it's going to be between us. And okay, so you don't you don't have anything written. Uh, there's there's no money in yet. Okay, I'll so tell here you that. we go. For the people that are watching, we ain't making money off of the podcast <laughs> yet. That's beautiful, and they need to know that. And they also need to understand when y'all start bringing in those big sponsors, like, to continue to consume this content, we have to monetize it. And, you know, part of it is, like, y'all understanding what works for your audience, what they want. So, like, when y'all do drop something, like, yo, here's a discount code or whatever, go take this, they actually do that. So now y'all keep that money coming in. We all work together here. So exactly what you guys are doing is what we did to start, and that's what contribute probably 95% to the breakup Mm. is that we didn't have a plan on paper. Or what's what? That's right. So it's like, y'all, there's some, y'all, you guys, it's only two of you guys, so y'all might be able to figure it out, but like, the shit happens overnight. The algorithm catches, and boom, y'all go from 84 people watching live to 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. Mm-hmm. And now money's involved. Just like that, boom, Wondery, Series XM call, y'all. We're going to get, we want to do a two-year deal, $10 million. 
you put up all the money. And I don't even know the the the, the other contrib- contribution from like who's hiring everybody, firing everybody, mm-hmm. you know, staying up at night, all night, working this every single day, doing Captain's the social post, caption yeah. post. Boom, like there's a lot to it. That shit happens overnight. So now that money comes in, now what we doing? And so like <clears throat> where you guys are at right now is where we were at when we started. And so take the emotion out of it because there's for sure, you know, we all have our egos and different emotions. Um, you know, it's like they look at it and say, say it like, all right, let's say I am athlete does $10 million this year. I got to build out a team. I'm trying to, I'm trying to scale this to a platform. I'm also, I also need to hire a COO. I need to hire a financial controller. We need to hire uh, several people on the social media side. Yeah. We need to hire producers. We need to hire PR. We need to hire blah, 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 blah. And also from a talent standpoint, you got three guys, four guys on their show, and then we're doing multiple shows. This person's making 300000 This person's making five. This person's making a million dollars, right? So now that shit, but then taxes, so now that shit, where, where is that ten million going? Right. You built in a a, a a real company with real expenses. So the podcast space is so interesting right now. So like, if now I say, I come to you and say, "Yo, here go five hundred thousand right now," you look at that and be like, "Oh my goodness, this is amazing mm-hmm. podcast." Yeah, true. But when you understand the business and the upside, the opportunity, you might go bet on yourself. You might say, instead of me taking this five hundred thousand, four million, there's people I've offered a million dollars, more money than a FS they'll make on FS one or ESPN or any other place. And they said no because if they do their own thing, the upside is greater. Right. If you can make five million, if you can make ten million dollars, I can do it too. Hmm. So what I would say is when you think about our space, um, and where I was at with our guys is taking the emotions out of it because for sure I contribute to it. I would say, hopefully they would say they contribute to it as well. Um, it's like the upside is greater for them on the other side. Like I put everything together. I put up all the money, right? And then when we start breaking through and, you know, I, I was educating. I was telling like, here's the opportunities. Here's what we're doing. You're only paying me what? You only want to offer me uh. what? And so, like, they're doing a phenomenal job. And um, it was tough to see them go. You know, I would say that I'm probably still recovering from it. Now, I, I ain't going to say that. Being transparent, I'm still recovering from it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but it's good for the marketplace because it's different perspective. Their sauce is their sauce. My sauce is my sauce. Can't nobody take my sauce. Uh-huh. You know, so, like, I know what we've built with them, without them. And now I'm in this space where I'm going to do my one-on-one thing. I want to be the next Oprah when it comes to sports broadcasting. And then, you know, we got some other things. We'll bring our show back, like the banter and the three, four athletes. But I'm in a really good place. We're we're generating some revenue. We understand how to monetize it. But it's just like the upside was just too too great for them to take Mm. a deal that I was offering them. Right. Why would and, I and I stand on and I, and, I, yeah. and I look you guys in the eyes and I stand on when I offer them. When I tell you like the same contracts, like I I invested damn near a million dollars in just attorneys and consultants to put together the infrastructure on what this looks like. Mm-hmm. The same deals that I signed, they, you know, from ESPN, not ESPN, I was on FS1 or Showtime. It's the same type of like language that we put in our deals, right? And the money that I was making on FS1, there's one or two people that offer more money than that. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I, I I hear you. Yep. You know what I mean? And and for me, I I'm always gonna wanna be a little bit of the opposite. Like mm-hmm. very much the same. But the only thing that's different with me is I if if it was up to me, like you said early on, I would have him do the whole podcast. And I'd watch, <laughs> I'd watch from the outside. That's right. You know what I mean? And and, and uh, it, t- early on, I was like, hey, yo, do you want to change it from the name to Danza Project? Because it has that name on it. I don't, it don't have to be that. And I told him, hey, let's just, 
you you want some money from it here? And he's this dude's too goddamn stubborn. I'm always I I just hand him money. He's like, nah, I'm not taking it. I'm not taking it. Stop. And I, I'm like forceful, like, yo, take right. the fucking money. What's wrong with you? You right, know what I mean? Right. This person just paid us for a show. Take nah. And that's why when you were asking him if he's gonna leave, I know his personality. His personality is gonna be like, oh no, y'all want me up here and y'all nah. Get the fuck out of here. I just know he's his his personality is that way. Yeah. My personality is that way. But yeah, I but, also yeah, feel but, but, like, but 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 you gotta understand, like Channing Crowder was sitting on local radio in Miami, making, I ain't gonna put his business out there, making okay money for the, making okay money, mm-hmm. for ten years. Mm. I played as one of my favorite teammates ever. I know his business. We talked, you know what I mean, and so it was good for him. Cause he's very frugal and he, you know, he knows how to budget and do all of those things. And he made some money playing ball. He played six years in the NFL. Yeah. He wasn't a national presence. And so, boom, we break through. And now, he's a national presence. Mm-hmm. He's on inside the NFL, a show that I was on for ten years, as the first active athlete, full time broadcaster. And so. Okay, Brandon, you offering me <laughs> the ask you're, is a you're offering different. me <laughs> almost four hundred thousand dollars in year one, and you're telling me that it could potentially be a million in year two. But these people over here, or I can do this on my own. So that's where it gets sticky, is because that's a real personality. That's a real. That's a real thing, right? Like I got somebody on my team right now that's like kind of wavering. And I said, you know what? You're a confidant. You got three type of people in your life. A confidant, constituent, or comrade. Confidant is somebody's there for you. Fuck, I'm here for you. I don't give a fuck about this shit. Constituent is someone there for the opportunity. So, boom. I'm here. You're paying me well. I like the opportunity. But then if somebody give you better terms, they going to go. Mm-hmm. A comrade is someone there for the fight. They like fighting. The fight is over. They leave. Right? Mm. So, majority of people are constituents. If you that's and that's a real thing. Like I was saying, like somebody on my team, I was like, "You're you're confident. This doesn't have to end bad. Because if there's a better opportunity for you, I'm probably going to tell you go take that opportunity. Yeah. If I can only pay you two hundred thousand dollars, but then this corporation comes and hire you as COO, and it's an operator, somebody behind the scenes, this person come and offer you." Five hundred thousand dollars. I'm gonna tell you to go take that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's the part, that's the challenge, and that's why we got to have these conversations from the beginning. You know, it's like, all right, what is the business and understanding where it's going to go? Because there's podcasts like Smartless starting year, and we don't, as minorities, we don't see this uh, often. You know, it's almost impossible for us. But this is happening in a podcast space. We start a podcast a year later. Now we offer eighty million dollars. I hear go 120. It's a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, tough. It's, a lot of it's, it's gonna change some relationships too. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it just kind of happens. Because, because like, you know, and I, I take y'all out of it. Like for me, it's like, oh well, I've been I s- sleep in a facility, you know, in the studio. I'm doing everything all day, every day. I put up all the money. Um you know, you, you guys are showing up six hours a month out of the month. How many hours are in a month? For sure, contributing to it in a major way. But, like, all right, well, what does that work? Right. Because that's where it gets tough. It's like when you break through and then you're trying to say, okay, well, what is it? What is this million dollars worth? Mm-hmm. And then you got some people saying, well, I'm 25%, I'm 50%, I'm this, I'm that. And it's like, ugh. You know? But there's... Okay, you you got twenty five, but there's seven people at the table. How does, yeah, if we can't all be twenty five, right? Yeah. So it's like then you really got to start taking inventory and figuring out what's work, what's worth it, and that's the gem is what you're saying too is figuring that out early, mm-hmm. so that when you do break through, there's no discrepancies. We discussed right. this. We already we understand the mission, and everybody's okay. We're okay. We're okay. Let's move forward and let's ball out. That's right. But sometimes those conversations don't happen in the podcast space. You're right. Because right. it starts off as a dream, as a hope, as a table and a few mics. And then it becomes something. And then it's like, wait, we skipped that part where we established operating agreement. That's right. You know, like, 
there's something to there be you go, yeah. operating it, it, agreement. It need, everybody needs to know their role here. Like so it, it's, it's something that we talked about. It's definitely something that we discuss. No, it's not. Y'all need to figure that out ASAP. Especially now. I agree with them. <laughs> we do because they're, they're, now they're on the table. Yeah. You know what I mean? The numbers are on the table. The office are on the table. And yeah, I don't, I don't need anybody's money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That for me, it's more like, okay, I'll do it my goddamn self. I just need to, I just need to hire the right people. But I do believe that throughout the process, the people are showing you who they are and where they belong. They, they tell you out in the open. That's when you, like, you know, that's just having the eye to identify people. Like, okay, when when the deal comes, I know who I'm saying. You're getting it. And, and for me, it's written. This person's getting this. This person's getting this. This person's on a salary. This person's on this. Right. And, and if you have a, if they have a problem with it, when it's all said and done, that's when I am cutthroat. You know yeah, what I mean? It's like, I'm yeah, like, I got, I'm yeah, going to do what's best for the business. Yeah, it's like, okay, I appreciate for everything, everything you've done. Here's this. Boom. Let's move on. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And that's how you should be. And then people outside, they don't understand that. It's like how to operate and run a business. It's like, no, like, I finally realized, like, you got to take the emotion out of the money and do what's best for the business. But you have less challenges if, from the beginning, you align. Like, here's the vision. Here's where I'm going. This is what I'm going to do when I get it. Boom, 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 boom. Fully transparent. If you do your thing, I do my thing, we're going to be good because this is what's going to happen. If not, then I'm always going to do what's best for the business. Mm. Yeah. But then you're going to look at me and say I'm the bad guy. I'm fucked up. Yeah. yeah. It's like, no, just it's just business. Yeah. So do you feel like you're the bad guy in that situation for them? I come off as the bad guy. I come off as the bad guy because, you know, for a year, year and a half, I didn't talk. I let them do that. Mm. How can I go out there and be? Getting at some podcast beef when I'm sitting down with Procter and Gamble, the yeah, NFL, yeah, PepsiCo, yeah, Diageo. <laughs> I'm working on Sirius XM, multi million dollar deals, multi year, multi million dollar deals. <laughs> Hello. Think about it. Hello. And it's like when I come into the room, I'm already challenged. I'm black. And then also I had a pass. So now I'm coming in. It's like, oh, you're some podcast beef. Like, what are you asking me for? $10 million? What? <laughs> no, they're not even, they can't even hear me. And so a lot of that, like, you know, it's like divine mentorship. You study people who come before you. And so I study a lot of the music space. And so, like, one of the people, like, when I, I told you, I said, there's Diddy, there's 50, and, and there's, there's Jay-Z. Jay-Z. And sometimes, a lot of times, well, I operate 90% of the time, like, Diddy and 50. Uh. Right? And what I mean by that, they're doing some phenomenal things in business, but they their emotions are in their sleeves. Hove, uh, most of the time, you don't even know what he's thinking or he's what so next, stoic. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the best yeah. way to operate in business, okay? And so, like, for me, I would like to get to that where, where Jay-Z's at. And, um, you know, I can't go out there and be get, get, get caught up in that type of beef. And so... Um, you know, like I, 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 I study it, and so like when you look at Jay Z, Jay Z, he, who he beef with, he, he's he'll throw some 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 subliminals out there, but for real, it was like him and Nas went at it. But for the most part, if, if he ain't like you got to really listen to him, if you ain't really really listen to him, he like yo he don't he don't address nothing. Like if you don't I, really, Lions, really listen to him, that's that's such a huge gem because he said you know. I, uh, he was talking about. I tell him button up. Like uh, Joe Budden kept dissing him. He said that you know they just, I just tell him to get his shirt. Just tell him button up. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> that was it. It was over. So Simple. that's what I. That's, that's what, what I, I thought should. Drake should have done. Mm. Yeah. Tell, tell him button up. Mm. Leave mm. it alone. You ain't, even, you ain't even need to address it. Right. He. That's the blueprint. Like this divine mentorship. We've seen it before. We've seen beef before. Did you mean to say that? What? The blueprint. Yes. Okay. Hey. Pun intended. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Um, and so I'm sitting back like, all right, how do I navigate through this? There's a breakup, this and that. So I'm looking at, I was, but for seven months though, we were talking. Trying to figure things trying out. Trying to figure things out. I mean, a couple of days before they, you know, made their announcement, Fred Taylor hit me up. I'm in snowboarding up in. Uh, Vail caught her out, and he's like, baby, bro, we're going to work it out. I'm like, yo, just, what's a fair deal? Just show me a fair deal, bro. 
And then three days later, da 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 da. da. I'm like, okay, cool. Yes, so like yes, seven yeah. months, mm-hmm. we we already we, we you know you're trying to figure it out. And so like, I'm talking to Nori, talking to Joe Button because Joe Button had a breakup. Oh, yeah. What do I do? How do I structure this? Da, da, da. I'm bringing in consultants. I'm putting up the money for attorneys and trying to figure out like the right language and all these things. Cause it's like, this is, this is like, we are the pioneers of the space. It's not just me, but you guys as well. In the next three to five years, what we've created is going to dictate how the other podcasters coming do business. Like believe it. True. Audio is the blueprint. But how do we not, how do we now monetize video, which is mm. more significant upside? So like how we're figuring things out and testing shit and failing is going to determine a lot about this business. So yeah, man, like you know, you can learn a lot from the people who come for you. And for me, it's like you know, I I I, I channel like Jay Z in that moment where I'm like, he ain't say much. So when you got a lot of, I'm like, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you with success, you know. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you with. I'm gonna kill you with just like continuing to win, and so I did that. And so like, the narrative is their narrative. I see. You know, and 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 well, we all contribute to it. Right. But that's why I said take the emotions out of it. It's like they had better opportunity over there, and I'm here. Yeah, so. and 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 to, to cap that off, if they if if. Breakfast Club offered you one point five million. <laughs> I'm gonna definitely be in your ear, like, bruh. <laughs> Go ahead. That's hey, that's one point five million right now. <laughs> yeah. You better take that. Well, what you do? You do both. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you, you best, go take that. Best. But then, like, how often do y'all shoot? Well, well, twice a week, well, two or two or three times a week. Yeah, it's just like motherfucker. It might be time to leave Ben's or whatever <laughs> the hell you sell these cars because yeah, well, no. you got that in the morning. And then your ass got to come come over here and do the project. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. In the afternoon, you do both. Yeah, but that's the thing though. He owns his own, own company too. You know what I mean? Company. So like, I'm in insurance. So he's he's got his own shit too. So that's, that's part of the beauty of the dynamic. Money doesn't necessarily sway us. We right. we realize we got something dope and we're doing something dope that we built from the ground up. So. We're not so uh, susceptible mm-hmm. to those kinds of offers. And we know right. you don't win right away. Right. Correct. You know what I mean? It's the, the, first, the first thing in any business is the losses, mm-hmm. the investments, investing in yourself, which a lot of people don't want to do. A lot of people are like, oh, no, take that deal right now. You got to, like, do you know what it would look like <laughs> taking this deal right now? Opposed to taking your time, continuing to invest in yourself, building, and mm-hmm. then when it gets there. And I, I feel your pain on that a lot, like, building other businesses it was just like everybody was like oh well what about me and i'm like not a dime the effort really wasn't there and now that it's starting to make money now i gotta you want that much like how it goes (laughs) for for me i always felt like damn yeah Yeah. i i was the one that lost that's right you know what i mean when it when it came to like we might have made a hundred thousand this month but i made negative 17 for us to make that that's just that's just that's just the Financial, fiduciary side of things. Mm. What about the times when your lady was upset at you mm. and missing your kids, this or that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Or that's you expense. fucking crying, and you know yeah. what I mean. So like, that's what people see is like they just want to talk about from a money standpoint, but they don't see it. And that's one of the conversation I had with Fred. And this is where, it, like, in retrospect, I could have played a difference when I said like fifty diddy trying to be Jay, like I need to be more Jay-Z. We're in a meeting and we talking numbers. We lay it all out and he just like da 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 And then after an hour of this, I'm like, what the fuck am I? Wife just filed for divorce. Mm. Bet you didn't add that to the equation. Like, and you want, and, and I'm doing this for my family and you want me to give you what? And so like, that's where the diplo, where I say learn to be diplomatic. It's like, it should have, you know, that language shouldn't have came out. But what I feel, I, I stand on. Right. Like you show up six times, uh, six hours out of the month. I'm sleeping here. I'm Amazing. putting everything on the line. Even my, my lady is investing her time. She ain't getting paid. I ain't getting paid. I still haven't got paid from I Am Athlete to this day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, and then you asking for what? That's not, that's unfair to my kids. Ooh. So. This ain't you about know, your kids. It's about me. Right, there you, know you know I mean? go. Yeah. But 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 there you go. But 
<clears throat> and what I'm realizing too is like, and then you say take the emotion and the money. Then every, everybody's gonna come from a selfish standpoint. Yeah, so just like I came from a selfish standpoint. My kids, my wife, blah blah blah. I don't even think I, I don't care about that. They don't. And so now I'm starting to operate in a space like, okay, what is it that? What are you saying? What do you want? Okay, and like, how do I meet your needs if it if it's what's best for the business? How do we do this? How do we compromise? Because yeah. that. Everybody's selfish. Everybody's selfish. Yeah. Just how they feel, how they feel, they stand on that. Like, they, they really passionate about it. Fuck, nigga, Brandon, money, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I'm saying the same thing. Like, fuck, nigga, that, that, yeah. that, yeah. what's up? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> yeah. So, a good lesson that I learned in business was a phrase or term called opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just what I earn off of being here right now. It's the true cost of this opportunity for me to not be somewhere else too. So like, let's say I can go to work and make, uh, let's say a uh, $500 day, right? Let's say I make $500 a day. If I don't go to work, not only do I not make that $500, but I'm also spending $300. <laughs> so the $300 isn't the expense that day actually cost me $700. That's the opportunity. 800, cost. 800. 800. Uh, well, I, I, Okay, yeah, we gonna focus on the message, my bad. <laughs> yeah, here, my bad. I've been man, get this handy out, me bad, but no. Um, but opportunity cost, like, it's something that you got to take into account. You have That's to, right. you have to think about what it costs for me to be here. You know what it costs for me to set this up. It's not just for face value. It's not just what you see. There's Orlando's more to getting it. into the candy. I hear it. Yeah, dang. Or <laughs> you mess up the audio. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I'd be, I be looking. Motherfucker, or what yeah. you doing? <laughs> yeah. he, said, he said, Chris doing bad math. Let me get yeah. 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 I'm trying to catch you just a laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. cool. Man. We got to get you a mic. Yeah, well, oh, we, yeah, yeah. We got to yeah. get Orlando a mic. He's got one. We just we just didn't have it there today. Oh, okay. He got his little extra light. Oh, yeah, we, we, got yeah, we, we had We had it for one show. We tried it out with yeah, Landon. Yeah. And I it was like dope. It. It's every once in a while. It's, it's nice having a sound guy in the room and every now and then say, what do you think? <laughs> That's right. Because, yeah. you know. Well, that was Chef Nancy for me. That's my chef. So when you see oh, shit. our chef and the food come up, you know what I mean? It breaks up the conversation. And it's like, you got this, boom. And it's like, what do you think? I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's dope. That's dope. My girl, it's like man. the shop had the barbers. Y'all got, you know, y'all sound guy. We had our chef. Yeah, I we got, still got our shit. My girl is Colombian and Venezuelan. I thought about bartenders. I thought about all that shit, but Colombian and Venezuelan. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. it. Who the fuck? You know, yeah. no, just she's not here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll schedule you. Yeah, nah, we, okay, right. it's okay, baby. We won't do that. That's no. that's interesting, right? I got Puerto, I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican. Yeah. She's Colombian and Venezuelan. It's, it's like y'all. It's, it's like yeah, your yeah, family. Yeah. What you? What did you say earlier? Is the what? Indian, Chinese, German. Yeah, but what Cuba. did you call it? You said something. What? Uh, the way mixed? you described it. I don't know. You're like twice mixed. So you're so profound. Twice mixed. <laughs> you're so <laughs> profound. Yeah, this guy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah. Mr. Philosopher. It's you crazy. Got the entrepreneur cutthroat, <laughs> just straight from you know what I mean. Yeah. Real. You. <laughs> Yeah, he, yeah, he, that, don't that's be the fooled, dynamic. Bro. Yeah, that's the dynamic. Yeah. That's the yeah. chemistry. That's the beauty. Don't yeah, he be, always don't be fooled, he's, he's always dumb. When, me when down. I'm sitting here with Boozy, it's, it's different. I'm talking different. We we no, laugh about different, different shit. We, it's like me though. No, but I'm like that. Dope. Like I sit, I'm talking about mental health. I, like I let them boys, Ocho, Shady, Pac Man, y'all can have that conversation. What I care about right now, like I'm really asking you why, and why you feel that way. You know what I'm saying? So that's the that's the beauty of it. Yeah. That's why I'm sitting here saying like, oh shit, they got it, they hacked it. You know what I'm saying? That's high praise, man. I really do yeah, appreciate but I'm, you saying. I come that. from where they come from, but it's like I'm in a different space. So I know they. I know Channing's route role. I you know I knew his role. I I I know Pac-Man's role. I know Shady's role. You know I know Ashley Nicole Moss's role. I know my role. My role right here is just like I'm asking. I'm trying to get to it. Yeah, I'm trying to ask some yeah, tough yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah, the real <laughs> shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it is. A lot of gems. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, and and we're truly appreciative. Oh yeah, to have any guest up here, but guests of your caliber that is doing what you're doing, that's huge for us. Uh, before I let you go, the question I want to ask for you, uh, ask you that we ask our guests is, life is grand. Out of a zero to a hundred, because if I said zero to ten, it's like you could say a five and just people feel like this. But zero to one hundred, where you feel like you're at in your scale of success right now? Mm. That's a great fucking question. I'm still in that. 
stealing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really good artists. Yeah. Uh, uh, really good artists. Uh, you know, they copy. Yeah. Great <laughs> artists, they steal. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. You know, we learn from each other. So I'm stealing that. <laughs> um, man, zero to 100 to 100. I, like I talked about earlier, I would say that, man, <clears throat> from what the world was, what how the world will answer this question, it would probably say like a 50. Because I've invested, you know, at this point now, you know, I've been saying like 10, 12 for, the, you know, for a few years. At this point, like I'm pot committed. I'm like 15 million in. It's like everything's on the line. And so like what's coming in, it's not where I want it to be, which is a beautiful thing. Like we made ten point five last year. It's like mm-hmm. unicorns Hello. three years, and it's not. It's I am at the end house of athletes, so it's a unicorn for sure. So now, like the tough part is how do you scale? There's a difference between startup and scale. Yeah, scale is like all right. How do we do twenty over the next twelve months? How do we do forty? Now you have a real thing. But in this space, it's very sensitive. The shit can go crashing. I can go into bankruptcy. I can go into losing it all. And so so like the 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 way the world will answer this question would say like probably forty or fifty percent. How I'm gonna answer this question, I'm gonna say a hundred because and it took a while to get here, but I know my product. Mm. I know my brand. I know what I'm trying to do, my model, and um, I believe. Mm. And it's a direction, not the destination. Okay. So, like, you know, I, I, I've learned from my first mountain. My first mountain was make it to the NFL. It took me 18 years to make it to the NFL, get drafted, and then learning from that, that process, right. that direction. Boom, 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 boom. And then I'm also learning from the Steve Jobs, the Elon Musk, yeah. the PayPal mafia, you know, the guys who started, they launched PayPal, and then this one went to Utah, YouTube, this one went launch Reddit, da 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 Crazy. And if you think about the top companies, the greatest companies, they started in their garage. Mm. Yeah. Hello. And they had this, yes, we're fucking in the garage, <laughs> bro. Yeah. We're literally in the garage. People don't, yeah. they will never know this. We're in the garage right yeah. now. Is it okay for me to tell yeah, you? Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello. But it's beautiful. Hello, but you invested a lot of money in your garage. It's different than uh, the garage that we see Typical. with Elon Musk. No, it wasn't Elon Musk. It was Microsoft. Uh, uh, Bill yep. Gates and him. Bill, Bill Gates, Gates and also. Uh, was it Steve Jobs part of it? Too? Bill, Ga- Bill Gates and S- Steve Bill Jobs and and, and um, My, uh, um Facebook and no not Facebook Elon Musk start no Bill Gates started in the garage and also Amazon yeah, okay Bezos. Amazon oh Bezos, Bezos. Yeah. okay yeah. I remember seeing it like graffiti or right. something like so that. like yeah. and then also do you know like until they really broke through like Amazon uh you know they were just in debt <laughs> until they broke th- for years forever a long time right like so, longer than. They had been up, I think. I yeah. remember when I heard that story. That's right. So I'm 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 at a I'm at a hundred right now because, you know, I believe in the process. I believe in the direction. You know, and I've, I've I'm I'm able to like if I can learn from this person, or if I can see that you made it, then that's how I believe. Like I'm I, I made it, and I think that as an like I know as an entrepreneur, and as a high achiever, high performer. You have to be a little bit delusional. Hmm. Like, I don't feel what, I'm not going to point at you, but I don't feel what that person feels. Yeah. Their threshold for pain is different than my threshold for pain. And I don't even know if I feel pain. Mm. Ooh. You know? So, like, when people may say, like, oh, it's time to give up. It's time to go this way. It's like, no, I'm, I'm, this is my direction. Mm-hmm. So, that was a very great, that was a really good question. It was a difficult one. I think I gave you the best answer. Yeah, I, and that's the dope shit about that question for me is like everybody answers it differently because they view life differently, and I think that's the most important part that you could get out of somebody. I always tell people um, if they, you know, like, well, what what is your show about? And like getting to know the individual, mm-hmm. and you know the way they, the, who they are, and the way they answer questions or what they're about. And so who am I? A, well, what have I taught you about me? Great question. 
I think, uh, you know, but a dope individual mm -hmm. that you live life your own way, not based off of the rules that were taught to you, the, the, the rules that you, the code that you live by. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of people won't offer gems to uh, competition in a sense, right? That's that's what it is. It's like we're the Buffalo Bills, you know what I mean? You're Miami the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Y'all kicked our ass 50 to 20. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, it is it is that, that most people won't do. So right. it shows that you're somebody that's like, you know what? You're free with yourself in the world. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. I don't, I, I, these headphones, y'all don't need these headphones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we already wearing them different. They're already on you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah I'm ready gone. to take them off. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's take them off. Yeah, yeah. for the last Dead three minutes, take them off. Off. Ready. You know what I mean? And see how this feels. Orlando, you could hear the sound. You yeah. tell me how it is. But um, it's, it's more or less like we get to, we learned a lot about you. Him and I, after the show's over, the, the first thing that him and I are both going to say is like, yo, this shit was different. Right, right, You know right. what I mean? Um, and we knew that bringing you in. I, I tell him all the time when we have a conversation, I'm like, yo, we got a potential to get this person. We got a potential to get this person. You're one of those shows where I'm like, you're not only I think it's going to be a dope conversation, I think we're going to learn a lot. Yeah, right, right. You know what yeah. I mean about how it is. So I think that I learned about you that people made a mistake by not sticking with you. Mm-hmm. You're somebody that you could, you're in your direction. You understand that. So it's not about, um, not that you don't care about the money, but it's not about the money. It's about what the future right. of, of what you're building is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's super dope. And I also think that you obviously live for your family. And you're huge on something that you already taught us about yourself throughout the years is the mental health yep. is important. And building that in people, you, I learned that from somebody like yourself. You know what I mean? Like me being back there, being a huge football fan, to hear somebody talk about mental health, the first thought was always, he's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and then, it's still the first start in everybody's Yeah, head. and but it really should be like, yo, there's another human being inside of there. Stop mm -hmm. thinking about it like, oh, they fucked up my fantasy. You know what I mean? They should have caught, you know what I mean? Oh, they're all over there tripping. They need to get in the game. They right, need to get right, to right. dribble the basketball. And so people don't understand the, the trueness about a uh, person. You're 100% you. You're Ooh. authentic, and I think that that's something that's this show will live on forever for us. That's dope. That's fire. I appreciate hey. this. It was dope, man. Yeah, yeah man. Appreciate that. I learned a lot from you guys as well, and uh, I'm glad we took the headphones yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Let the, let, yeah. Just to kind of add to what he was saying about, you know, what what did we learn? What did I learn personally from a you know from my perspective? Um, you're, you're somebody who, like I said earlier, carries the flag for a lot of things. You know, you're representing for athletes, yep. you're representing for mental health, you're representing for just people that want to find their true calling and act on it. Just the way you present yourself, the way you dress right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm in shorts and a tee, but you came like, I'm on a different level. You that's look right. like the person that's going to be the Jay-Z right. that you're trying to be, and that's part of it too. That's right. You know, but you're also having all that stuff on your plate and on your shoulders. I think that shows too. Mm -hmm. which is cool because it's going to be interesting to see you complete that task. Vulnerability. These conversations, talking about mental health and how important it is and having a, a good mind for business and making sure you have the operating agreement signed, you in five years, ten years, seeing all that come into fruition, it's, right. it's going to make perfect sense. So That's right. That's right. I, I think it's, it's dope for me, myself, to have the conversation with somebody like yourself because I'll That's be right. honest, a lot of times we talk to rappers and the conversation doesn't always sound like this. You That's know? right. So it's dope. And not just rappers, but athletes too. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not all athletes mm -hmm. have that business mind state. So yeah, hearing that. Adrian Broner alone. <laughs> stop, stop. You had Broner? Yes. Shit, Broner was training at House of Athlete. He still ain't do my show. So y'all y'all at least got him. <laughs> yeah, at least yeah. got him. Well, you ain't dope. hear about that show? No. <laughs> we, That's we just what I was going to say before you even go when there. Did he <laughs> Hold on. All right, everybody watching, go watch the Adrian Broner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We just put it out. It happened Cause we got four, roasted four months because ago. he was, he was way too under the influence. Yeah. That's, that's why we're saying tough. hello. Yeah. Right. That's what he did the whole episode. And it was just like, it, yeah, that's tough. It, it was bad. It was, it was rough because we said it, it was three days straight, but he left us hanging. And then he finally came through and then you hear outside. He was slow. Woo! <laughs> when he walks, he's like, nah, bro, the fucking cameras. Put, turn the fucking yeah. camera on. Right, right, right. And I'm right. like, yeah, here we go. You know what I mean? We really gonna do this? Yeah. Ow. 
I don't know Is these. this my call? Hello. I don't know these motherfuckers. Yeah. Right. He's talking to us, and I'm like, us, is us you don't know. <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Right, like, right, okay. right, right. He said, bro, the fuck cams. And then it was like, oh, we should have never aired that interview, but we do everything live. Right. You yeah. Know what I mean? So it was just like, you know, we're live. He's like, I don't give a fuck. It went viral, man. He's like, then he looked at him and he was like, what's that chain you got on? <laughs> Cheap ass chain. Damn. He's like, that's how he I said, know you broke. <laughs> he said, no, he had like, it out Damn. for me. He had, as soon as I walked in, he, he, you know, he's dapping everybody. AB, pleasure to meet you, man. We happy to have you, bro. Welcome. Come on in. That's going to be your chair. He said, that ain't going to be there for long. I said, what are you talking about? He's talking about my hair. I said, my hair, I said, I got good jeans. I'm like, but he right. walk in, I'm, you know, I'm not a bad looking dude. And I felt like maybe he was just kind of like, let me punch the biggest nigga in the room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, let me establish dominance real yeah, quick. He right. came in hot, bro. He and, came uh, in hot. Bro, we, we sat down, he, we, we don't poured up a shot. He's like, drink that whole cup right now. We were like, whoa, <laughs> yeah. boy, whoa. He was like holding the cup, like, no, nah, no, nah, the whole thing. And, but, but it's, it's also yeah. kind of crazy because we're like, man, honor to me, bro. Yeah, it's it's AB, respect, bro. Yeah. Like, man, I'm so happy you here, bro. I, 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 all about billions. Come on, that's right. Let's go. He's like, cut it out. Y'all cut know my out. record. Was, yeah, he's like, I'm trying to highlight like you. But what it is, is I want to hear all that. But we talked the whole show about mental health, and it's like, you know, I yes, think, yes, yes. yes. Mm. So when you talked about, it's like, oh, or looking at this person, not just crazy, and it's just like, okay, well, just not just shut up and dribble. It's also curi. I always say curiosity. So it's like. So we act like that's like, damn, what's going on in their life? Absolutely. Bro, and that's why at that's, first we never yeah. put, we didn't put the interview out until he was a good space. Right, right. So like, and then a lot of people, like you said, a lot of people think that's cheap, but I mean, we paid for that damn yeah, interview. I was that's like, right, damn, let's right, get something that's out. Right, that's but, right. but also I didn't, I didn't want at all for people to not let him heal. That's right. You know well, I mean? well, listen, listen, it's part of the journey. Hell, you, you never know. So we got to understand that, you know. A lot of times, majority of times, we're just planting the seed, mm. right? And and so, like, that interview, he could be looking at that interview, and he could be looking at, like, damn, that was me. Mm. Like, yeah, bro, like, these like pe people came out, put together a dope environment for you to come have a conversation, mm -hmm. showed you the respect and love, reached out to you, and then you came and you put that out there. And so now mm. you're looking at that, and you like, damn. And that might be the interview that gets you over the hump. Mm. Uh, people were saying that too. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest yeah. with you. I think, I think this one will be because this is who we are. Right. You know, our our normal day to day conversation is this. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. this is what I want people to really understand about us. So it's these conversations. Right. Uh, even bootleg Kev the other day, uh, the Fat Joe conversation. Like these conversations is who we are, and what I want people to know about us, which is why like. When those deals have come across, I'm like, eh, just, just too much stuff in there that says, mm -hmm. don't be this or don't be that or don't do this or don't do that. Don't talk to these I'm, people. For me, it's an immediate, like, I don't care what it says, what the number is, anything. I'm 100% not willing to give up myself. I've done it in business to where sometimes right. I felt like, damn, I just let go that much money. But I just know that I don't want to have that battle every night thinking I sold myself. Right, you know, what I, mean? I don't want to have that battle. Like, I'd, I'll be, I'll be better served as myself as an individual. And I'm, I do practice, practice mindfulness and meditate. I try to do yoga. My back isn't that great. Some of the positions, I'm like, I'm gonna stay in this one, <laughs> right? You know, and I'm not changing into that one, no. But uh, and, and the first experience I had in yoga in like a room, I fell and kicked off the light. And, Oh shit! Turn it on. I'm gonna hit you up. You gotta come do yoga with me. Both oh yeah, you're you're a beast fly. at this fitness shit. Yeah, I'm getting yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. one of the state of the art yoga shit. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting y'all up. Y'all coming? Come on. Yeah. Especially you on the on the yoga stuff because you into it. I know you like yeah. to lift weights, so yeah, you yeah. going. I trained yeah. jujitsu, so yoga goes hand in hand. I would love to do jujitsu. Ju 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 jujitsu. Yeah. Jujitsu. Yeah. 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 Ju yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it'd be the next Israel out of Sanya right here. Yeah. Now, where you doing that? Uh, Wagner Rocha Martial Arts in uh, Hollywood. I would I would love to try. It. I'm gonna come with you. Oh, that's yeah, fine. yeah, that'd be dope. We're gonna um, hold you to that. No, for sure. Right. I'm gonna go too. I'm gonna get my ass with, but I'm gonna go. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> like it's a discipline. There's also something about being on the mat, bro. Like mm -hmm. talking about, well, there's so much more to it. I mean, the wrestling component to me, uh, like you know, I go out to Vegas MMA mm -hmm. or UFC, and I'll just go out there and just like 
just like grapple with guys. Yeah, man. They'll kick my ass. And I just love it. It makes me feel alive. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's, it's, you learn a lot about yourself. It's very humbling because yeah. in the beginning, you are only the nail. And then after a while, you start to become the hammer. Yeah. And you know, you start out only losing and just learning how to survive. And after a while, you start winning. Yeah. And then before you know it, you're, there's not a single, you're already a big guy, but there's not a single room that I'm in that I feel insignificant. I know for a fact. I know. I will hurt somebody. Can't see, hurt that's somebody. why you can't mess with nobody because, yeah. like, this Indian guy over here. Yeah. <laughs> Indian guy, and he's like, fuck you up. Bah, bah, bah. And now, now we have to figure something out to keep the next couple minutes going, right? Because one of the rituals I have has always been Junior coming in and oh, giving okay. a dap, and he's he's about he's to be here. He's about to be here. Second, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's, that, that's the biggest thing for me is like my son being able to. I'm I'm huge on family. Right, right, right. You know what I, I saw mean? that. And so, you like, have, uh, three. I got three. Okay. Yeah, eight years old, twins, boy and a girl, Z and Ziggy. And then I got a four year old boy, um, Zo. Okay. Yeah. So how is this? About how is like juggling family and everything that you got going on it's tough yeah. it's difficult and you're always learning right so even from you 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 taught you taught me a lesson and you taught me a lesson and you didn't even know it today right or or I, maybe not even teach me a lesson but reminded me like the right way and it's like before we started this podcast like you know it's like yo you know look bro like I got time. You already said it. Time yeah. is important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know you guys like that. I pull up, boom, I'm ready to go. You three minutes late, five minutes late. <laughs> so boom, we wasting five minutes. So. And then, you know, before we start the show, you like, I got to call my son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was beautiful. Appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? It's family first. It's like, because I, I thought about that the other day. I'm like, yo, I think that might be a thing for me where, it's like a rule because you men we need rules we need routine we need there's a like we gotta have that discipline but that shit gotta be on paper and so I was like damn maybe a maybe a rule for me is no matter when my kids call me I'm always going to answer and the reason why that was a big thought is because like all right what if I'm like accepting like a, a big goal that I have now is and I just came up with this I want to be uh, one of the EGOT winners Ooh. so Emmy Grammy Oscar Tony and I was like, what if I'm up there receiving that award and my kids call me? Uh-huh. I'm going to fucking answer. Come on. Mm. And so, that like, speaks. yeah, that was beautiful, bro, Dope. seeing you do that. Like, pause before we start. It's like, I got to call my son. Yeah. You know, and it was only a minute, but that made that meant the world to him. Mm-hmm. You know? So, yeah. yeah, I think it's extremely difficult. Um, I don't believe in balance. Mm. Um. I just think that it's like you got to prioritize the main thing first. So we all got the same amount of time in a day or in a year. And so what you do is you take the personal stuff and you plug that into your schedule first. All right, what does my wife need? What does my children need? What do I need? Mm. And then you fill in the professional after. There's a great book called The One Thing, and, you know, it, it really hit me one, uh, years ago when I read it, right? Like, imagine us having two balls, glass and We do have rubber. two balls. Yeah, we do got two balls. <laughs> Stay, ball. Stay focused. Yep, glass and rubber. The glass ball is family. It's personal. You drop it, a little scratch. You drop mm-hmm. it again, a little scuff. You drop it, big crack. You drop it, shit's like, oh, fragile. It's like, oh, this is about to break. You drop it again and it shatters and you can never put that together again. Mm. That's our personal lives. Yeah. Wives, kids, ourselves, our health, et cetera, et cetera. Personal, I mean professional, jobs, careers, what we chasing. Mm. You drop it, it bounce back up. Drop it, it bounce back up. It's always going to be there. So um, that's a great ex- illustration that touched me years ago. Yeah. And uh, the best way to, you know, to make sure that you're keeping the main thing, the main thing is that routine, that schedule. Yeah, that's something I've been trying to work on, too, because my mom was recently retired. And she said I don't call her enough. Now she got more time, so she got time for me now. But right, right. She said, you know, I want to hear from you. I know you're doing your thing. I know you got the podcast and the company and the this and the that, and you're chasing your things, but don't stop to reconnect and, and bring yourself back to ground and call your mother, you know? Right. So we agreed, all right, Sundays are the day. If anything, all else, anything happens, I got to have a conversation with my mom. Mom, what's going on? Nothing much. Everything's the same. You good? You good? Cool, bye. 
or it could be an hour, two hour conversation, but whatever it is, just make Sunday. time for, for that. And it's something that I also realize it's not just important for her. It's important for me too. We're both something both that we, right, right. that we do, that we, that we should be right. doing. And, and it's, it's important. Like you said, like plugging in the most important stuff, hopefully that's family for you first. And then trying to build stuff around that too. Right, right. Because you can't be everywhere at once. You just simply can't, but you do need to have that That's allotted right. time to do those things. That's, That's important, right. extremely important. Right. Damn it, he was right. Huh. These headphones, it feels better without the headphones. You like it without? Yeah, yeah. it feels good. <laughs> yeah, it feels Ooh, good. Okay. There you go. The headphones okay. are done? Headphones Is it are done? Because I feel good without that. I've been ha- trying to say this for a while. I don't yeah. like the headphones. Well, I do the hell out of me. I do both, like on our I am athlete show. I have the law, so we have the, you yeah. know, the wireless. Mm-hmm. Then on my my daily show, we have these mics. No hit. I don't. I the headphones never work for me. Yeah. So our yeah. audios is one hundred percent good. Cause I'm a lot like you. Like I, I, as soon as we walk in, even if I bring in freelancers, if I'm in New York shooting, Las Vegas or L.A. shooting, wherever I'm at, it's like I. Before we start, yo, audio, you rule the room. You ain't messing up audio. You mess up audio, you don't got nothing. Yeah. You're scarred, the whole so, thing. So, so, like, audio is the most important thing. And so, like, no, nah, like, we've been, we been fine. I think you guys be fine. Yeah, that was the, we're going to put a gem counter. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this shot. It looks so much better. Like, <laughs> yeah, stay right it there. does, though. Stay right Easy. there. Put your headphones on right now. Look at that. Hold on, hold on. Before you put them on, put, put it, it down. Put it down. Still, still <laughs> shot. He All looked, right, so he looked like still guilty. Shot. So watch this. HBO. Now I'm put this on. <laughs> Triller. <laughs> Take them off again. All right, you see this? Oh, Let me see. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. Can we see this? Look at this, man. Yeah. Yeah. Reaching. Uh, Back over Is that number yeah. two? That's number yes. two. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, six months oh, into wow. it. She's just, you know, she's, yeah. she works out more than me. Right, so Michael. Congratulations! Look at this. Daughter. Look at this dude. Yeah, yeah. what's up, my yeah. boy? Handsome. He's thirty. He's thirty too. This, this the ritual to the fist bump. So, blow it up, blow it up. How you doing, good? <laughs> you Beautiful, one, bro. Appreciate you. Good. That's my baby boy. You gonna be what's playing football name? too, right? Oh, no, no, you're not playing football. <laughs> no, stay away from football. Yeah. What's yeah, his see, name? He's, he's right here, Michael. Michael. Michael Junior. You go. Got him right there. Now yeah. tough. Here you now, go. Hello. Now I got the. Now I got my family. I gotta spend the money to get my daughter on the next chain over. <laughs> yeah, I found out right after. Baby girl. And then <laughs> three. There you go. There you go. Three. <laughs> 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 I love you, but damn, you know, I'll nice get you your own. You. All right, Junior. Yeah. That's beautiful, yeah. bro. Tough. So that's 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 how, that's how we. Tap out. We close out the interview. Hello. That, that's, that's the word. The pride I appreciate you greatly yes, for sir. your time. We, we're, we're definitely going to hold you up to the yoga and the Brazilian for jiu-jitsu. Sure. And, uh, please. And shit, we'd love to come to the show one day, too. Yeah. You know no, I mean? it's all family so, now. It's love. Appreciate yes. it, brother. Respect. Hello. Respect. This is episode number 146. 146. 146. Orlando, I appreciate you. Let's sign out. Yeah. Like, subscribe, and do all that.